Hello and welcome to Just Bleed Radio, episode 17, the awards show. Happy New Year, everybody. Today we'll be taking a look at who the Morning Combat Discord donks have chosen for the fighting awards for 2023. I'm your host, Danger Mouse, and it looks like it's just myself and Oster reviewing these tonight. So, so maybe we should just rename this segment the Mouse and the Pest Controller. What do you think, eh, Austin? <laughs> That'd be fine. I mean, sure, why not? <laughs> At this point. <laughs> anyway, before we get started, I just want to thank Podium Baby, the MVP of the Morning Combat Discord, who keeps track of everybody's picks and compiles stuff like this for us. Uh, he's been kind enough to give us early access to what the donks have voted for and to give us something to talk about during these barren times. The voting is still open for a couple more days, so it is possible that some awards may change. But from what I've seen, most of the categories have pretty clear winners, so it'll probably stay the same. But anyway, cheers, Podium Baby. Thank you very much, man. It's much appreciated. And before we get rolling, I'll just say that this year's UFC Fight Picks will start next week. And anyone who listens to the show and wants to get involved is welcome to hop onto the Morning Combat Discord. Uh, Just Just Bleed Radio is the bastard child of Morning Combat and it's where we all met and ended up becoming friends and starting this show. So if anyone wants to get involved then you can just search on Discord for Morning Combat or you can simply send me a message at underscore Danger Mouse and I'll send you an invite. And with no further ado, let's get on with this. Hey Austin? Yes sir. (laughs) Okay, so we'll start with the Coach slash gym of the year. And I, I just want to say on this one, this was a category I suggested and I was roundly mocked for su- for uh, suggesting what I did. And it's kind of turned out the way that I said it would anyway. But uh, very quickly, we have Francisco Grasso at the Lobo Gym versus Marcus DeMatta at ATT and Henry Hooft at Kilcliffe and finally Eric Nixick at Extreme Couture. Uh, those are the only four nominations we got. And the first three, Francisco, Marcus and Henry, all received a stunning one vote each, which and which is with Eric Nixick with 16 points, which is what I said in the first place. We might as well not have voted. It was pretty obvious that Eric was going to get this one. I know we had a little conversation beforehand, uh, and I think we said that Eric was probably going to get it. I, I don't think that you don't have any argument with this uh, particular reward, do you, Austin? No, absolutely not. And for one reason <laughs> only, I mean, like... If you're going to say, like, if we're sticking particularly with MMA, like with Sean Strickland, and then, like, also having Nganu take on Tyson yeah. Fury, I mean, exactly. come on, there's no other <laughs> options. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, congratulations, Eric. Uh, what an amazing year you've had. Uh, and I, ho- I hope he just, just does just as well in this next year. I know, I know we have recently received news that um, Nganu is going to be fighting... Uh, AJ uh, in the boxing, yep. uh, so we'll we'll see how that was. If he if he could put, it's so funny that Angano has got this. He, he's had two boxing fights, one against Fury and one against uh, AJ. Uh, so a boxer with a zero and zero record could potentially end up with zero two, uh, zero and two record against two of the greatest uh, boxers in the weight category at the moment, which yeah. is pretty funny, really. I mean. What are you, you going to say? Like, he, he, if tall, uh, what, what's the expression? Failing upwards is what you would call it, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. But it's a good, hey, he, I, I, out of all the guys that you could argue that, you know, fail upwards and probably don't deserve what they're getting, this is a guy in, in Francis that you can argue he's definitely earned what he's getting. And God damn it, you, you feel happy and proud for him. I mean, considering Absolutely. where he's at. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, on the other end with um with Nick Zick talking uh, about MMA with uh, Sean Strickland, I mean, the year that that guy had last year and the way he started out this uh 20 this past 2023 um just taking last minute notice, short notice fights and well, with the uh uh what was it? Izzy fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, then the Izzy fight too. That like year you're looking at a guy who literally had to change his entire year around and then ended up on top in an unprecedented way. Like as a coach, taking a guy who you know has the talent and making them perform regardless whether they win or lose it, and they show up, that's hard to do. That is that is pure coaching to like 
to add like to his resume and you're looking at a guy who I don't think has been in it very long. It's not like he's been in it for the past 20 or 30 years. He's been in it within the past 10, I think. But even then it's like, it's still hard to do even for a season coach. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he's clearly very, very good at his job. Um, I think he's got into the game through his father. Wasn't his father some kind of uh, football coach or something? Yes. Yeah, so he's obviously learned something from his father. Uh, I, I did think he's he's great. I mean, I know obviously he's won the coach of the year, but I loved his uh, in the Izzy fight. I think it was the second round when uh, Sean came back after after the second round, and he just went, "Look, he's snake charming you. Stop, stop watching what he's doing. Just follow our plan." And that was it. After that, Sean never put a foot wrong. Uh, he nope. just destroyed Izzy in that fight. So yeah, just a great moment of coaching that was open for everyone to see. <clears throat> so yeah, bravo, bravo, Eric Nixick. I, I don't think I don't think we need to go much further on this comp- on this. No, uh, no, absolutely not. If I had a beer, I'd cheers them right now. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and then uh, another slightly silly one. Now we have the most shocking non-fight moment of the year. Um, uh, we'll just do the top three of this one uh, in equal second slash third place with two points. We had. Sean Strickland uh, jumping on DDP in the crowd brawl a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Colby Covington uh, calling out Leon's, saying he'd greet Leon's dad on the seventh level of hell, or hair, as Colby actually said on that particular night. <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, congratulations, Colby. You can't even fucking do a uh, pre rehearsed line very well. Uh, no. That's a complete flop. And uh, the the actual top was 12 whole points was Dana committing domestic violence, which I'm not even actually technically shoot counts for this year. It was on New Year's Eve, so I suppose it depends whether it was before or after midnight that he slapped his wife. Um, I think it counts just because it was at midnight. I think that was the thing. Yeah. So it's like it's in the New I'm Year. Happy, so it's like I'm happy to give Dana that one if he wants to yeah. slap his wife on TV. <laughs> oh, God. Like, well, what did he say? I have to bear this. This is mine to bear. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be, to be fair, yeah, he did stand up for it. He, you know, he didn't try and uh, make any excuses, particularly. He went, you know, oh, I've messed up. I really shouldn't be slapping my wife. No. What a well, shock there, Dana. Well, I think he had to say that because of everyone kind of coming to bat for him, which was weird. It's like, uh, come on, guys. Like, you, you, it, it, the idea is to not do the thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. And then it's like, it was so weird that, like, because that, truth be told, this is what I think of it. Had anybody else done it, they lose their job. Had anybody yeah. else, you know, like, they go, you know, they lose their job. They probably get into a divorce. And then on top of it, you're, that man probably goes to jail that night. I mean, hell, Chuck Liddell had a similar situation, I think not like too long after that, and he wasn't even the aggressor. He still had to be put in handcuffs and escorted off the property of their house when his, him and his wife had a spat. So, no, I, I didn't even know about that. I hadn't heard about that one. Oh, no, yeah. So his wasn't even that bad. She, his wife kind of was um, the one making it a, 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 an issue where he was in the house still, and he didn't want to leave, but then the cops were involved and he basically said, I'll go, I'll go. It's fine. He still had to be handcuffed because that's the thing in California. It doesn't matter if yeah. anyone, it, someone has to go to jail. And, mm-hmm. and that's the thing is that Dana got away with it, but whatever we're here now. Yeah, I, where, where were they though? When uh, Dana did it, weren't they in Mexico or something? Yeah, they were in Mexico. Yeah. yeah there we go. That'd explain it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Of course. Pull that, pull that big wad of, wad of notes out of your back pocket and uh, the police will let you go in uh, Mexico, probably. Uh, no yeah, no hatred rich. on our American fans there. Uh, no, right? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, being yeah. rich is a hell of a thing. <laughs> it certainly helps. Yeah, and just quick, just quickly, I will go over. The other ones we had were Ian Gary's personal life drama, uh, oh, the God. lawsuit and the resulting information being uh, made public, which I guess was kind of surpri- uh, surprising. And the funny one was... You know, power slap still existing. Uh, hey, which, I'll be <laughs> honest, that one should be like getting a little bit more votes. But the the <laughs> uh, I mean, look, I, the, the I am fascinated with what's going to happen with the lawsuit. I'm surprised it only got one vote. I mean, yeah. if you ask if you ask a lot of the other guys, there's a couple of them that probably would it, and probably one in particular. <laughs> but uh, it's one of those things where you're like, I, they, there's a lot of information coming out now, and we're looking at the UFC's business practices in a different light that were only hearsay 
now it's out in the open and you're like, oh, yeah, this was happening. <laughs> they are pieces of shit. <laughs> and of course, they, yeah, they're the big 800 pound gorilla, as they want to call it. Like that. But of course they were because they were it's all predatory the way they were doing business. Like we want to give the UFC excuses a lot because we want to see the fights and that's fine. But you have to understand the reality of the way they did everything. That's not normal business, <laughs> but but that's me personally. So I, you know, I'm a little bit more of a stickler for that kind of stuff. I love looking into lawsuits and seeing what the information comes out and whatnot. I mean, hell, the the whole thing with CM Punk, his information coming out was like he's he was getting five hundred thousand as a guy who had no experience, and he was going to get uh, two hundred thousand on top of uh, yeah. like after so many buys. Of a wow. pay-per-view. Yeah. And he you, fought you know, two You know a lot more about this than I do. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it, it, I like to look into that kind of stuff, but at the same time, it's like, there's nothing that's going to top Dana hitting his wife. <laughs> God. Uh, right. God. This is terrible. <laughs> and, and this next one is uh, one that won't um, interest anyone who's not a member of the Morning Combat Discord, I guess, but uh, it was the... <laughs> It was the donk of the year that we decided to fit. Our uh, editor, Super Day Fair, Fairtex, managed a stunning 1.5 points. Um, <laughs> but but the, the, the clear winner, I, I won't go through the entire category because it won't mean anyone to everyone, but uh, the clear winner was uh, Dead Wrong Daz Riccio all the way from yes. Hawaii with, with six points. Uh, he's the Duke of Dead Wrongs. Uh, he should have been. He probably should have been donk of the year on the uh, actual MK show, never mind on the MK uh, Discord. Uh, so yeah, what, what... <laughs> should have been. The dude literally has a segment where he sees he's the only one who's accurate ninety percent of the time. What, what are you, like, let's give it to the guy who we're doing business with. Yeah, thanks a lot, Morning Combat. Now it looks like the MK, like the more like the MMA awards all over again. Except it's not you. It's Daz. <laughs> Fucking bullshit. But whatever. Uh, we love you, Daz. <laughs> Yeah, he's a star on that one. He he just nails them pretty much. If not every week, it's every other week pretty much. Yeah. Uh, he, he definitely keeps Luke and BC on their toes. Uh, oh, yeah. He keeps BC on his toes a lot. I love it. Just keep doing it. <laughs> Honestly, you should do it more often. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I'll say the, the other ones, I, I'm not really sure. Necessarily. I, I, yeah, let's let's just not bother with that one. We won't go any further on that. <laughs> no, the rest of them is a good list. It's a good list, but like honestly, Daz just being as consistent as he is, legit. That's a man. Yeah. That that you everybody, no one has anything bad to say about Daz. So Daz, honestly, nope. I believe should have won it and on the actual MK uh, MMA awards. That would have been yeah. icing on the cake. But you know what? Hey, he's our dunk of the year. Fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh... Doctor Doctor Daz Riccio, who also That's does a great right, yeah. job in does a great job in real life as well. I believe he's a uh, I can't think of the proper word for it, but I believe he looks pediatrician, after children. I pediatrician, thank you very yes. much. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, bravo, bravo, Daz. Not only do you do do a great service to uh, you know children's health, you also do a great service to morning combat. So yes, bravo, That's right. Daz. Well, well, well done. Uh, so. And uh, this this next one kind of puzzles me uh, in some respects. The lifetime <laughs> achievement award. Uh, which we had Alistair Overeem, who managed to get absolutely no votes. Glover <laughs> Tashiru, who scored three points. Robbie Lawler, who, of course, had that amazing retirement moment. And the uh, the thing that every MMA what, fighter wants to do, he wins his last fight in the UFC. He got that amazing uh, retirement role uh, that was played. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic for Robbie Lawler. I think I voted for Robbie Lawler, Lawler actually. And then with five points, we had Amanda Nunes, um, who obviously retired as double champ. as that very emotional moment where she took her gloves off, laid down both belts in the cage, uh, knelt down in front of them, kissed both belts. So, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the greatest female mixed martial artist of all time so far, I believe. I'll say it, yeah. Agreed, yeah. 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 And, and then with seven points in first place, Fedor Emelianko, which... <laughs> I kind of, I kind of don't get why he suddenly popped up this year. To be honest, uh, it's, did he, re you know did he retire from somewhere yeah. else? No, it was because he retired in Bellator and he was surrounded by all the old uh, OGs of MMA. Like, um, uh, 
I believe Zakaraba was in there. You had Josh Barnett. You had Mark Coleman. You had Dan Henderson. You had uh, uh, one of the Nagueras, I believe. Uh, you had like all the OGs of MMA. Ah, like, right. And Fedor was retiring that night in Bellator. Uh, finally, you know, calling it a career. And uh, it was it was nice. It was a nice send off. The problem was that he got knocked out prior to oh. that. Yeah. So he just it was this, kind of this like, is like, my problem. This is my problem with being a ninety nine percent UFC MMA watcher. I didn't see the Bellator retirement, so I, I'm very you know, sorry, for, very sorry, Fado. But, but no, it, honestly, it would have been better had they done it on a. Like, cause they try to make it a thing, and it was an event that you could. Uh, you all wanted to. I think everybody wanted to see Fedor at least get one more win. I think Robbie's was more emotional, um, because of who Robbie is. Fedor should have retired a while back, and the fact that he was still doing it, trying to surf for win, you know, trying to find one more, you know, send off yeah. win similar to Robbie. The difference was Robbie was no longer, like at the apex of his career, similar to Fedor, the difference was is that Robbie is that guy that you love to watch, Same, similar mm-hmm. to Fedor, except Fedor... Fedor had a window where he could have left, and it would have been fine. Robbie had several different moments where he had success or failures, and his career, like unlike Fedor's, it's like he was good for a short period of time when he was a champion. Fedor had a long established, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, history know of a long time. Yeah. It, it, like his career, Fedor's career could have left similar to Anderson Silva's when Anderson should have left prior. And like, mm. there was a period of time where like, you could have been GSP job walked away on top and it would have been fine or whatever. Everybody likes to say the thing with the uh, Fedor, I think he should have just retired sooner. Robbie was just another vet at this point. Mm-hmm. And nobody knew if it was going to be his last fight. And then when you get a, a concern, okay, well, is he going to keep fighting? Is he going to retire or not? And then Robbie finally says, you know, it's weird that week of the fight, Robbie finally says, you know, I, I this is it. And I, I just want to kind of go out there. And we all kind of felt that for me, Robbie should have, uh, I would prefer like uh, Robbie kind of getting the vote, but you know, it's the donk's choice. I, I think Fedor is an mm-hmm. excellent choice. And then Amanda Nunes, honestly, the double retirement, like with the champ, uh, both championship belts there. I love it just be. I love it more because I hate Juliana Pena. <laughs> <laughs> and just seeing her being so vindictive and such an asshole on the side. I don't know why. Seeing her mad gives me joy. And just knowing <laughs> Amanda was able to beat her, take the belt back, and then defend it. So that way she can just say, fuck you on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me happy that you know Fedor getting a send off by all these old veterans that was actually something special you, you're getting all these guys in the same room and then getting them in the ring to basically each give them a personal goodbye that was actually pretty pretty emotional and yeah. you know a well good send off for him Robbie's to me felt personal just because I remember watching him you know regain his second life in the UFC and become a champion and actually defend the belt. And yes, and one of them was controversial with the Carlos Condit fight, but still, a man went out there, you know, laid it out there. He, he was going to try to finish the fight as best as he can, same as Fedor, same as Amanda, but, you know, you can only ask for so many good opportunities and some of them don't work out, no. you know. But yeah. this is... Uh, Rob, this Robbie has given us so many good fights over the years. Um, what's, what's the one where the... I'm trying to. Remember. I can't think of the guy's name now. Whether it was his nose was smashed across his face. Uh, it was an absolute oh, uh, war. Oh, Rich Franklin. What was it? You talk about uh, older or wait, which one? There's a multiple with a broken face. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. It's not Rich Link Franklin. I was thinking of. Um, oh bloody hell! Rory, Rory McDonald. Oh yeah, yeah. You're thank you. It was an yeah. absolute bloodbath of a fight. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, where we go with this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Two, yeah, yeah. Two fights against him, didn't he? A split decision and uh, and a TKO yep. for the second one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, that that was one of his defenses of the welterweight yep. uh, belt. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's <laughs> so, a great fight. <laughs> yeah. So so sorry, Rory. I couldn't remember your name, but I remembered <laughs> your fight. <laughs> to be fair, he has like six different names at that point. Like he has like 
you know, Rory McDonald, and then he has a Rory McDonald God of War or Ares or some shit like that, and then he's he's like he had you know a couple of different names out of that, you know, throughout his career. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, so yeah, congratulations, Donks, on picking Fado. But uh, yeah, and and this this is the one this is the one that of the votes where I am going to roast the Donks a little bit on this one. Uh, we'll we'll start from the bottom. This is the event of the year. Uh, we had the USC fight night, Jan versus Divashvili, uh, uh, which scored a stunning zero points. Uh, so no one liked that one. We had <laughs> USC fight night, Holloway versus Allen, which scored one point, uh, which is possibly a bit unfair. I don't know about that one, thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, USC 283, Teixeira versus Hill, four points. Mm. I guess that was- it was an okay fight. I don't think I don't think it was a great event. I'd, I'd have to double check. I haven't looked. No, nah, just because of what before. happened to Glover Deshera, just being a punching bag for five minutes, or I'm sorry, <laughs> twenty five minutes. You know, it's not always the greatest greatest way to end a you know a great card. No. Yeah. And then uh, USC two eight six games next, which is Edwards Edwards versus Usman three, which got six points. Which I know for a fact I didn't pick this one as as one of the events of the year. As much as I loved Edwards beating Usman, obviously. I, I didn't think the card was the greatest. Uh, you know, it was it was a clear it was good. win for Edward for me. Yeah, it was a decent enough, but I don't think it was a, one of the better events of the year. And and to be fair, the donk scores re- reflect that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, the, the, for that fight particularly, I, I was surprised how many people made Usman the favourite for that one. I thought it was, a, you know, I had no doubt there that Edwards was going to win that fight. Yeah. Um, the way the first fight played out, you can kind of tell, like, all right, well, you could still favor Usman. I just don't think the uh, the issue with uh, Edwards being an underdog in his hometown with the title, like, you're not fighting at elevation. You're also fighting yeah. a guy you just beat, which usually, if you lose the first fight, you, you know, you can, and it's a trilogy, <laughs> you tend to win the third fight. So, <laughs> but, you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Yeah, I think we were talking about it before we started the show. You know, there was no, as you said, there was no elevation on this one. That's mm-hmm. what cost. That's what cost Edwards the second fight. I think very likely he would have beaten Usman in the in the second fight had it not been held in Salt Lake City. Uh, I, th- yeah. I think we would have seen it. Went back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, six six points for that one. Uh, next up was the USC fight night: Darius versus Saryukin which scored an unlucky 13 points. Uh, I can't remember very much about that card at all, to be honest. Maybe uh, uh, two slams. Two slams. Oh, is that the ah, yeah, is that two yeah. slams one? Ah, yeah. that explains and it's, it. Yeah. It's also terrible. It's not that it's a terrible card. It was a more exciting card and like, oh my God, what happened? How do you, what? <laughs> uh, you know, because Dariush dies and, you know, half of your heart you know, drops because... You wanted to see Darius get a chance. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you see the life of his career get snuffed out yeah. of him when he gets dropped unconscious, and it's it's it, it's it's depressing. But hey, you know what? It's a good card regardless. Of, you know, would, it, it, I think that thirteen is a little underrated, but you know, <laughs> that's just me. And then on equal on thirteen points, we had UFC two nine five Prohaska versus Pereira. Uh, which I thought I think it, I, I think it was an okay card. I I don't think it was a bad card. No, I think the the main event kind of for me, Dave Dave kind of elaborated like he liked the idea of it being like a monster fight where it's like you have no mm-hmm. idea what's going to happen. Both of these guys can finish each other, and it's exciting because you're on the edge of your seat. I felt as though both men kind of had moments, but it kind of felt like they were wonky because that they both knew they could finish each other, so they were really hesitant. Rather than mm-hmm. being more cold and calculated, they were more not fearful, but very um, counter heavy, and yeah. that led to this a lot of pauses and a lot of readjustments in that main event. And that kind of, for me, that soured the the card. The finish also didn't help, but you know, um, they did have that amazing thing. stare off at the start. Where I, I think, I mean, that's the best moment of the night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than Tom Aspinall winning, like it, other than that, like the 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 stare down was the greatest part of that fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
And then uh, let me have a look at this one. Uh, we had uh, then UFC 287, which was Pereira again, but against Adesanya too. Uh, I very much remember this one because watching it live, uh, I saw Adesanya walk out and I'd picked against him. I'd picked Alex to beat him again. And when I saw Izzy walk out of the tunnel, I was like, oh, God, I want to change my pick now. And uh, <laughs> I, I could have, uh, as a mod, as a mod on this squad, I could have done so, but I didn't. I, I just stuck with it. And, of course, Pereira, uh, Adesanya got that amazing, uh, beautiful KO, uh, doing his rope-a-dope kind of thing, bounced off the cage, just like a kind of Muhammad Ali style, caught him with yeah. it. Two, two right hands and then followed him down and just pounded yeah, him out. Yeah, I think it was like so. a left hook at the bottom too, but it was like he caught him like overextended and that was the yeah. thing. He, like you said, just he baited him in, allowed him to yeah. think he was hurting him winning. It almost looked yeah. like he was hurting him at a certain point. I'm, saying, I'm but... pretty sure he was hurting him with those yeah. body shots. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's good. keep your guard up at all times, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and then the next, that was, so yeah, 17 points for that one. We had uh, USC 90, Volkanovski versus Rodriguez, uh, which got 19 points, which puts it in third place, technically speaking. Um, I'd, I'd have to go back and look at that card uh, to see what else happened on it. Uh, I didn't bother re-researching it for the uh, for the show. So, uh, well, I knew, this I knew, is. I knew I was going to be able to fill the final in on this. Well, so. like if you're going to talk about the card, the card itself was pretty good. the The main thing is that watching the main event was like if I'm I'm going to just speak about the main event for a minute. Like watching Rodriguez go to war and nearly dismantle um, Josh Emmett the way they did in their interim fight, and then looking at how Volkanovski, the way he's built is similar to Emmett, maybe not as big, like, but he's short, stocky, got a heavy, he's got heavy hands, he's light on his feet, unlike Emmett, he's got just as much power, he's got just as, he's got definitely more cardio, he's more well-rounded, but the thing is, is that they're both stature the same, their, their statures are the same, and he... He handles Yair. Now, headbutt notwithstanding, <laughs> he, he handles it very well. And it's just the energy of that card, like, going up to that main event, that's probably the least most exciting part of that night. Like, if if you're going to talk about the rest of these options, like, Yair Rodriguez versus Alexander Volkanovsky, I think is, it's appropriate where it is. Like, the Donks like the card. I like the card. I, I can't I can't say I'm I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm happy that it's, I would say at this point, like what second place, right? <laughs> uh, no, it was in. Uh, that was actually well. It's take the. It's in third place with nineteen points. Uh, oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> or, or potentially fourth, depends on how you want to look at the scores. This is this is one of those where I said that the uh, donk could potentially uh, mess us up on the show here because this one could change. Uh, there's there's <laughs> like there's, there's only well there's. But, 19 points for, for that one, and the equal first places both have 21. Uh, but coming in at second place, we had UFC 291, Poirier versus Gaethje 2, which was a pretty good card. I'm just looking at that one now. I did bring that one up. We had, uh, uh, obviously, that as the main event. We had Pereira versus Blakovic, uh winning his uh, light heavyweight ch- title, I guess, there. Uh, we had the... Derek Lewis, which he started off with the flying knee, if I'm rem- remembering collect, uh, correctly, uh, against uh, Delima. Uh, he landed the flying knee and then followed him down and uh, pounded him out. Was, was that the one where he ripped his shorts off ag- again? Or I'm not 100% sure on that one. I honestly, I'm trying to remember right now. I think he yeah. does, yes. <laughs> yeah. And it also had the Bobby Green getting his uh, arm triangle choke against uh, the, you know, the against poor old Tony Ferguson who you know really really needs to retire this year. Sorry Tony, you do. <laughs> Time for you to go. We said home. that last year. <laughs> yeah, we very probably did. Uh, and then the other the other event on the uh, main card was Kevin Holland versus Michael Chiesa where he got the uh, it says Bravo choke on here, bro. That's a Darf's joke, isn't it? It's the same name. Uh, I mean, so yeah. I, well, he also I, I think I remember someone him. joking about that and saying that he was going to beat Chiesa by a uh, Darf's choke and he did. Uh, I think Kies has lost about three or four fights by Das Choke. Well, if you remember that fight, he literally just beats him up, and Kiesa almost looks like it's his second fight. Like he isn't sure what to do. Maybe that's just because he's been on the desk more often than anything. But like, yeah, maybe. But he just he looked like he just, you know, Kevin Holland's like, hey, give me your lunch money. What? 
I, I paid you last <laughs> week. No, no, please. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, he said nothing for him. And if he couldn't wrestle him, he he wasn't trying to fight. <laughs> Yeah, and, oh. and of course you had that fantastic uh, main event, but we will be talking about that later, so there's no mm-hmm. point uh, jumping onto it straight away. Uh, and uh, in second place, or I guess equal first, we have UFC 285, Jones versus Gan, and uh, UFC 284, uh, next door to each other, Makachev versus Volkanovsky, which both scored 21 points. And this is the one where I'm going to roast the donks a little bit for this one, uh, for uh, for putting them even, uh, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not. Criti- I'm not necessarily criticizing the uh, UFC. Let me just double. T- I've got the right number. Yeah, the two eight four card. Because uh, obviously, Makachev versus Volkanovski was a very, very entertaining fight uh, over five rounds. Uh, it also had the Justin Taffer defeating Parker Porter by KO, which I seem to remember was a pretty solid KO. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, uh, that's. I yeah. mean, well, that, that that's the only thing you kind of got from it, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was quite funny. I, I was when I was checking these earlier for the show. Um, all three cards that we look at had four finishes and one decision uh, mm-hmm. on the entire thing out of the five five uh, fights on the main event. Uh, but the thing is, uh, USC two eighty five, which is equal, which had the John Jones Cyril Gann main event. Also had Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko. Also had Shavkat Rachmanov versus Jeff Neal. Uh, also had uh, Gamrot versus Turner and Bo Nickel versus Jamie Pickett. And uh, I, I don't want to give too much of a spoiler, but let me just say that three of the three of the fights on that card are up for other awards. <laughs> uh, whereas, whereas UFC 284 has one fight up for an award, which is the main event, which I also d- disagree with, kind of thing, uh, as well. So yeah, uh, for me, 285 had that uh, card. I just hate the, the main event. Hell. I think I hate the main event more than anything. So I was just kind of like, I may have, I may have added to the discounting of this. <laughs> but you are correct. You are correct. As a card overall. 285 in my opinion has more to it i have honestly yeah. i can't remember if i if i i'm gonna lay my cards on the table here i was pretty hammered when i did this <laughs> <laughs> i can't yeah. i can't hold myself accountable and be like yeah that's the right <laughs> well you know what? I, I can't remember if i how i voted so <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure i voted with my heart <laughs> I, I know i know for a fact i picked 285 for my event of the year so i'm pretty i'm pretty happy with the, my decision there uh, I mean, that's also like the like if you're talking about just like events, like it, it it was an event. Like you felt like there was a magic in the air watching that watching that night, right? Yeah. Like, where was it held? That one. I'm trying to remember where it was held. Um, it was in oh, it was Vegas. Like, it was uh, Vegas. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, I mean, it's it's the it's the thing where we all talk about it. Like it, it's a one of those things where it's like you don't know how the cards are always going to go and that's always the saying you know i, I hate to use dana white's like, like oh, just wait wait until you know wait until the night of the fight it might not make sense and then everything changes it's like it's a, like <sighs> god damn it sometimes he's right <laughs> yeah funnily enough the guy who's been running the ufc for 30 years does occasionally get things right uh, you would hope so <laughs> <laughs> good good old dana I think I think two eight I think two eight four I think was a night of Aussie MMA. That's the thing. Like everybody enjoyed it. It was more fun to watch, and yeah. watching the main event allowed that that pressure to ease off because we had we we all watched that that main event thinking, all right, well Volkanovski doesn't even have a chance in this fight. He's fighting one of the best mm. grapplers out there, and arguably set the, a guy who's better than Khabib. And what does he do? I mean, granted, there was a lot of things that were going into that fight. So, (laughs) you know, uh, against Islam, but still, like, he performed. He performed admirably, and it was fun. Oh, for sure, yeah. And I think that's the thing is, like, I think that's what trumps it. Because you had a fun card going into it, and then that main event was, like, uh, again, well, it's it's like you said, it's got one (laughs) The main event is up for uh, an award. So, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) what are you going to do? You know, (laughs) Both, both are great, but one, I think, had more to it. Whereas the world, uh, the other one, it crescendoed just perfectly. Like there's, mm-hmm. there's nothing you needed to add to that fight night or that card that could have made it better. Whereas one, basically, regardless of what happened in the main event, it was already great. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, so yeah, two eight two eight five. I'll say gets. Get, I'm hoping someone throws an extra point on between now and the result <laughs> the being published. Still, yeah, the vote is still open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got one one guy, one day. If 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 uh, our editor, editor can get this out quick enough, someone vote on there and make me a happy mouse. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'll accept a tie. I guess it it was a fun fun fight. Uh, I think a tie least. is. I think a tie can be fair because then that means yeah. neither is greater. So. <laughs> but I, I just think two eight five had more to it overall. You know, if if you broke it down chunk by chunk. Oh um, no! Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. Better. I mean, that's the thing. I think that I think it. We'll we'll talk about that fight as it comes up as the main uh, yeah. as an award. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, okay, and then uh, we have newcomer of the year, which I won't bother going through the entire lot. Uh, we have uh, three contenders, realistically speaking, if I'm reading this right. Uh, we have the, the in third place, which is really funny because this guy is more known for the fight that he lost, I think, than the fights yep. that he's won, which was yep. Ikram Alistrov, who, of course, was famously flattened by Hamza Chimaev. Uh, with with a beautiful uppercut that sent his mouthpiece flying, uh, I've wa- I've watched that fight a few times and uh, he was winning. Really, right? wasn't fantastic. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I was, thought he was he was, it, he was winning. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, balls couldn't get him down. They were obviously both elite wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so yeah, I mean, Ikram Aliskrov. Hopefully, we'll see some more good fun stuff out of him uh, this year. We'll get some more yeah. fights. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how old he is to be honest. Uh, I think he's under under 30 so i think 2029 yeah. 20, i think oh uh, yeah that's that mass but it makes sense i guess with uh hamza being i think hamza's 29 i think as well so yeah they've come Both up in the same class yeah well i mean that and man then, definitely finished two fighters and in, in very scary fashion so i mean hell a newcomer coming in the way he did against the guys that he showed up to like you can't you can't complain about him being one of the newcomers in this list absolutely not no uh, and this, the, the actual second place one might be a bit controversial for some people who are listening. <sighs> the, the, the Donks actually voted Bone Nickel in at second place uh, such with 40, 40 points. You are sorry? I'm sorry, it's such bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I'm probably going to get hate for this, but I fucking hate this. I, I don't. Look, I understand what he is. He's not even got like 10 fights to his name. Like, no. I mean, but, I mean that's again, I, I think I said this a while back about. I hate when guys are inside of a the promotion and they only have a handful of fights. You could you could count on one hand how many fights he has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it is it is the award for newcomer of the year. So not them not having many fights kind of makes sense. I uh, know, but come on, at least get ten fights before we can even call. He's <laughs> like God forbid, like he could have been on the contender series still and probably got five fights during that entire time. Not even had to worry yeah. about it and probably would have been. Fine, being in the UFC. Probably fought two people who were ranked up to 15. I don't know. I'm being a stickler for this one because I just don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we're going to see a lot more out of Bo Nickel this year. Uh, I, I, know I would we- hope so. He almost didn't fight yeah. most of this year. Yes. <laughs> I guess he's still taking the opportunities to, tra- to train and learn more. You know, He has only been doing MMA for, if I recall correctly, uh, four years. So, obviously... A huge amount of wrestling pedigree behind him, but no actual MMA. Uh, he could have pedigree. fought two random no names, and it would have been fine. But no, whatever. Yeah. He was injured at least for one of those yeah. fights. So mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm gonna be the one that shits on this cake, but that's fine. You know. <laughs> uh, very very excited to see what he can uh, pull off because he he does at least. I mean, he's not he's not a Colby style wrestler. You know, he's not gonna take you down and lay on you. He is gonna no. take you down and try and rip your arm off or get a choke. Or he's quite happy to stand and bang. He does seem to have a little bit of striking behind him as well. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll see when he meets some better opposition. We'll see how good he actually is at that. Agreed. Uh, and uh, the Donks newcomer of the year was Diego Lopez. Who, quite frankly, I I can't really think much about his fights. The only memory really I have of Lopez is Lem talking about his hair all the time. Oh uh, my god! <laughs> yeah, because he's got the emo haircut. But yeah, if you want to talk yeah. about him as a guy who shows up losing a fight that you arguably could have given him against um oh I for, damn it I forget his name a Mozart Ibloyev and. Uh-huh. That's his introductory fight. Not a, you know, 
last minute fight, you know, against somebody else. This is a short notice fight against a top ten fighter who is arguably, you know, a top five guy. Is um he is dangerous. He has he's a big dude for the weight class on top of it. Not only does he have the ability to finish you, he's also got this ability to kind of keep pace and actually outpace you. I mean, hell, he nearly submitted, you know, Mozart twice in that fight, and he arguably could have won it. But he showed up. Nobody really had any expectations of this guy even before. Because the only reason why you would know him is if you're a diehard. And even then, you'd have to, you know, okay, well, I've seen him compete against X, Y, or he trained so-and-so. That's it. There's no, There was no conversation of him before he entered the UFC. Now that he's in the UFC, I, he's, he's still coaching. <laughs> and he's in the corner of Alexa Grasso and whatnot. And, I yeah. mean, hell, he's a good coach, too. So, it, you know, I, is, if you want to talk about newcomers, a guy who does a lot and is, you know, very dangerous on top of it as a fighter. Oh, yeah. yeah. Th- this, this, is your, this is your number one pick. <laughs> this is your boy. Yeah, I'm just looking at his record now, 23 and 6, so... Definitely a vet. That's 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 a vet. I would rather have to be the UFC. Yeah, that's that's the point. I guess it, I I don't really know if somebody with thirty almost thirty fights can be classed as newcomer. I guess he's a UFC newcomer. So yeah, that's I think that's the point, right? That. Like a guy who yeah. you know shows up to the big ball, to the main events, or like uh, basically to the big big promotions. You know, whether he's fighting for a title in, like, what other low, like, like the LFAs or whatnot, like, that guy eventually gets the call up to a bigger promotion, and that's when they become somebody, right? And yeah. this guy literally had, you know, a little bit of, you know, regional, you know, promotion uh, wins and whatnot, and he wasn't, like I said, the only reason why you would know him is because you know everything about the fighters he's around, and mm-hmm. not many people even know that, so... No. Definitely a guy who you would consider a newcomer on the big stage. Yeah. Uh, now, now that you mentioned it with him being the coach, yeah, it does, it, that, that more triggers a bell than his actual name in certain respects for me. <laughs> so, yeah, so, sorry, Diego. I will keep an eye out for you this year and uh, see what you're up to more. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. But congratulations from the donks anyway. I think, uh, what was it, a nine-point lead? That's a, that's a pretty solid. Yeah, that's uh, appropriate. That's appropriate. He should be in the conversation. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I should, should point out to everyone who's listening that some of these, uh, some some of the categories, everyone had one vote to make, and some of these uh, things you had you could pick one, two, and three choices. You know, three, three, two, and one point. So uh, that's what that's why we're getting much higher points on these. Uh, In a larger the point discrepancy between between some of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So again, congratulations, Diego. Uh, and uh, now we'll go on to the upset of the year. We won't go through the entire uh, lot. Um, we'll just go. It, we'll we'll cover the top four because that's what I can see on my screen at the moment. We had uh, we had <laughs> Leon Edwards versus Kamara Usman three, which was not an upset uh, at all, as I've already discussed. Uh, that was a, not for me anyway. That was a pretty cl- pretty. You know, if, if you'd asked him. Asked me to give a percentage on that one. I would have said seventy-five percent chance that Leon Edwards wins that fight. Maybe even yeah. eighty or eighty-five. Uh, it was not a surprise or an upset at all in my mind. Uh, and no. I think I think you pretty much yeah you obviously pretty much agree with me on that one. <laughs> uh, uh, in third place was a genuine upset, which was uh, Robert Whittaker losing to Drikus Duplessis at USC two ninety, which. Like I said, no one saw that one coming. I think no. I, I, I forget what the voting was on the Discord for that fight. I think it but was. I like know there two. were very many people. Oh, I you think watch it was like two, two or three votes. I think for him, and almost like yeah. thirty going yeah. the opposite. If I, 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 I could be exaggerating on that number, but like yeah. I think the there was a joke in the Discord, and I think it may have been um, one of the dogs that put up a meme. And it said, can you imagine? I forget the name of the donk who did it, but I distinctly remember the image of the fucking meme. And it was <laughs> Drake is standing above Whitaker and Izzy. Yeah. And it, like just the bold letters, can you imagine? And 
I was laughing at it because I'm like, he's not going to beat Whitaker. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's no well, way. That's, that's <laughs> the hilarious thing. I mean, MMA guru is Drickus's biggest fan, and even he, even he didn't pick Drickus to beat Whitaker. Uh, and he, in fairness, uh, Drickus was like, "Yeah, fair enough, mate. You know, I can understand why he didn't pick me." Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that was definitely one of the upsets of the year. So 21 points. He's, he's nowhere near the winner at 21 points, but definitely, de- de- I think he deserves its top three place. Oh yeah, agreed. Uh, agreed. It, agreed. It, I, I might have put it in second place myself. Uh, I can't. Re- I can't remember exactly how I voted. Uh, but for second place, most of the, uh, we had thirty-four points, which was Valentina Shevken- uh, Shevchenko versus Alexa Grasso. Uh, again, that famous event, USC two eight five. Um, their first fight, uh, which I guess it has to be the first fight because the second fight ended ended in a draw. So you can't really call that. You can't call a draw an upset, really, can you? No, um, no. I thought. I thought. Well, I'll be the one that says it. I thought she won, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but well, you, you thought know, Shevchenko won, or oh no, I thought Grasov won, and uh, the whole uh, I did I the, the explanation that that Shevchenko gave, she's like maybe the uh, the judges didn't want to give it to you know me because they didn't want a Mexican to lose on Mexican Independence Day. I don't know. I'm like yeah, there you go. Let's just throw bullshit out. Why not? <laughs> But nah, so, yeah. definitely a worthy second place. Just because, mm-hmm. if you remember, she had like a four-fight win streak, and uh, we were already talking about someone like Aaron Blanchfield being mm-hmm. on um, that trajectory to actually put a, you know, put yeah. some pressure on take, the take, champion, take the belt away from Shevchenko yeah. at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah I quite agree. Because yeah. yeah. we saw uh, we saw holes in the armor at 125 when there wasn't any. Right, like her loss to or um, her victory over Maya started pretty shaky, right? Because Maya just kind of came after her with her size, a little bit more heavy mm-hmm. grappling against the cage. And when she did try, I mean, she wasn't like it's not like you know Valentina put a whooping on her until the fifth round. It was more like okay, survive and kind of get out of the you know the spots, play safe. Yeah. Then she you a, know a, champ, a champion's performance, yeah. wasn't it really? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna win this, but I don't have to yeah. destroy my opponent. All I have to do is beat them. Yeah. Uh, then you see the um, the fight with her and uh, Santos, right? And my God, you could have argued that Santos won that fight based on grappling alone. And like mm-hmm. she wasn't oversized for the weight class. Matter of fact, she's pretty average for the weight class. And you know, Shevchenko says she came in under. Well, I mean, hey, maybe you shouldn't cut that much weight. Like, keep, you know, the idea is to be healthy in the fight, not to make the weight, right? So, yeah, it, for sure. it, it, she's playing into the, I, I just be blind on my feet, but then she says, I also am injured. So is Santos. Everybody's injured when you're in there, apparently. But yeah, it, it, the, the idea was, is that like she had shown, you know, moments where, okay, well, now the competition is starting to catch up with her, right? Aaron Blanchfield yeah. beat Santos, and we're like, okay, well, and then we see what happens with, um, you know, Shevchenko losing spectacularly because the fight's competitive. You're seeing mm-hmm. Grasso finally come into her weight as a 125-pounder. She's still young in the weight class and as a yeah. fighter, and all she was known for was being a decent boxer and having decent jiu-jitsu. I was going to say, you know, she's a really good boxer. You can't fall out. No, and she starts off with being heavy-handed. Like, she's knocking Shevchenko back. We're like, oh, shit. <laughs> she's doing it. And Shevchenko kind of gets back into the fight. She starts, like, taking her down. We're like, ah, shit. Uh, this is probably how she wins. I wouldn't blame her for it. And then, you know, she 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 catches Shevchenko off of, like, a spinning back kick. Shevchenko yeah. had a habit in that fight of over-exaggerating a spinning kick or spinning strikes. And well, they'd, they'd specifically trained for that moment, hadn't yeah. they? That's that's why yeah. she got, was able to get it so easily. They'd been practicing for it, and and she didn't miss her opp- opportunity. She was straight no. onto her back, and and that, that neck, that face crank was just. I mean, when you see the picture of Valentina at once, she's taking her arm away, and half her face is bright red, and the other face is just white like bone because there's no blood got into that area. Oh at yeah, all. no. Well, uh, it's not even so, a choke. It's a neck, like you said, a neck crank, and yeah, that's just that crank, says it all. Face crank. That's, that mm-hmm. says it all, right? And yeah, it, it, that's uh, the fact that she caught it as quick as she did, and you know, forced the choke and was able to commit to actually getting the choke was the more in, impressive thing. And you know, hey, I'm I'm interested in a third fight for sure. I don't need to see yeah. an immediate rematch, but I would like to see the third fight at some point. 
That would be. Yeah, I mean, I guess we've had a draw the second fight, so yeah, why not? Yeah, we're, back we're, 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 I think future. we're due for a third. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's quite funny. I know we're doing this category I think, but 2023 really was the year of the upsets uh, for MMA all the way through. I think we had so many Very fights. True. Yeah, we had a lot of them. To see. But there was no uh, doubt in the mind of the donk. There was no doubt in my mind. I know for a fact I voted this as my upset of the year. And that was Israel Adesanya losing to Sean Strickland at UFC 293, uh, which rattled up a huge 62 points, almost almost twice as many points as uh, the previous fight. And uh, when Sean Strickland obviously landed that beautiful straight one-two in the first round that had everybody, I think, jumping out of the seat for that one. It's funny for this one because it was... Uh, it was it was in Australia, wasn't it, this one? So obviously the time it was on at was stupidly late. So I didn't even stay up to watch this card. I just decided I'd watch it the next day. And then I came downstairs and turned the fights on. And uh, I, by the time it got to the end, I, I knew there was a lot of time left. I knew this was going to a long way. And I, th I thought that Izzy was just going to outpoint Sean Strickland. And then obviously saw the knockdown in the first round. I was like, oh my God, what the hell is happening here? Uh, and oh just spent the, yeah, I mean, right up to the last couple of minutes, because I, I saw it, you know, Izzy came back in the second round, was looking pretty good, as we were discussing earlier, uh, you know, Nixick jumped on it and stopped that shit straight away, you know, you get mm -hmm. his stake charmed, stop following what he's doing, just concentrate on what you want to do, yep. uh, and then he, he just took him apart for the next three rounds, and... <laughs> I distinctly remember uh, Sean marching forward at the end for the last 15, 20 seconds, wherever it was, you know, screaming at Izzy and whatnot. And I was like, oh my God, is Izzy, is Izzy going to pull off like a, a, a Leon Edwards style head kick knockout right at the end and cost Sean the title? And of yep. course he didn't. He was just more interested in getting away from Sean Strickland at that point. It, it, not only did he beat him in the fight, he beat him mentally uh, across every, across every measure, pretty much. That's so that. No argument there for me, and I don't think you'll disagree. That was the upset of 2023. No, I mean, this was one I was joking about it on the Discord. It's very, very rare that someone, you know, a fighter isn't picked, and no one picked Sean Strickland to win that fight. I really wish I had done it. I almost did the night before as well, almost as a joke, just, just to just to say someone had picked him and I, I really <laughs> wish I had, really wish I had now because I would have looked like a fucking genius at that moment. But yeah, yeah, congratulations. Well, yeah, yeah. well you knew what the conversation was, right? Like, yeah. going into that whole fight week, it was like, well, I'm sorry, the, the, even before that, like, Izzy picked yeah. that date he wanted to fight in Australia. Just, he didn't want it. He yeah. wanted, he wanted Drakus, but Drakus wasn't ready. And you can't, you mm -hmm. couldn't argue against, uh, Dana wanted to make it a whole thing, but, you know, Drakus just beat Robert Whitaker. Like, give the man mm -hmm. a prop, proper time to fight. Like, yeah, absolutely. Well, that, that's the thing, as it? it's proved out with uh, City Kickboxing, where um, Eugene Behrman came out and went, oh, well, you know, that's that's your bad luck, Drickus. You know, we offered you a title shot and you haven't taken it. And, you know, you shouldn't turn down shots like that. And you shouldn't pull out because you're injured. And I think he's had Kai Kara France um, and two other fighters pull out. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dan Hook has pulled out, admittedly broken arm. Um, yeah, Kai had, a he's had, he's had, he's had three three fighters pull out of fights. Yeah. After he said that you're not allowed to, you know, Behrman has said that you know you're not supposed to pull out of fights. You should get in there and fight. So, yeah. a bit of a and, bad look for Eugene Behrman. Oh, that's no, why yeah. City Kick, that's why City Kickboxing did not appear on the uh, coach uh, coach slash gym of the year this uh, this year. No, uh, yeah, I think a majority of their guys. Up. Yeah, I think a majority of the guys lost. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, you know, yeah. it's it that's them's the breaks, right? You got guys some yeah. years who will just have all their fighters win, look great, and then there's guys where it's like 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 Mike Brown. Like some of his guys like I'm I'm pretty sure a majority of the fighters that he coached lost. And and he was like a coach mm -hmm. of the year beforehand, you know. It happens, you know. Yeah, for sure. But definitely Sean Strickland versus uh you know, Sean Strickland uh beating Adesanya, Israel Adesanya the way he did like upset of the year for sure because nobody the joke was that he, he's just going to roll over him and then we're going to probably have him mm -hmm. you know fight you know on 300 against somebody against Drakus maybe yeah. or I, that, I think we yeah. even we, when we were discussing the fight before you know the week before when we did the preview show I even joked that the only way Sean might win is if Izzy broke his leg throwing a kick yep uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, so so sorry, Sean. You know, I love you. I love you to bits, but you know that was uh, just a a bad take from me there. Uh, I, th- <laughs> I think I think just like everybody else, we discounted the fact that Sean's defense is just so good. Um, so I think I think, and I think it was better against Izzy than it has been on pretty much every other night. And Izzy had. I know lots of people said that Izzy didn't perform. He didn't perform because he didn't get the chance to perform that night. Yep. You know, Sean just took all his weapons away from him uh, and destroyed him physically and mentally that night. Uh, he might have destroyed him uh, mentally at the press conference, to be there because Izzy well, was you very have, quiet. Yeah, you would uh-huh. have thought he was an Australian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had the crowd behind him certainly a lot more, which is kind of funny. I mean, I know Izzy lives at Izzy lives in New Zealand, does it? Yeah, no, he he lives in New Zealand, but he'll go to Australia occasionally. Yeah, so it was comeback of the year. I'm just looking at the list now. We still got a decent it's... amount of events or things to go through. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, well, this was the fight I was laughing that I was doing my homework for uh, earlier on. I'm just I, I can't see all the screens, so I'm just going to go through them in the order I can see them. Uh, we had Sadiq Yusuf versus Edson Barbosa. Uh, which Sadiq started off with that brilliant uh, first round, a clear 10-8. Uh, Michael Bisming even suggested that it could have been a 10-7 round for uh, Sadiq. Uh, and then Edson Barboza came back, uh, picked up his game. I think there was one more close round. And then Barboza ended up taking the round by, you know, winning the fight by uh, one point. Uh, very close decision. <clears throat> Edson Barboza, my veteran fighter of the year, because he had that amazing win, and then he had the great knockout against uh, Billy Qu- uh, Quantillo as well. Yeah, uh, with that with that knee strike. Uh, I know it wasn't a leaping knee, which probably why it didn't get more love in the KOs of the year kind of thing. But amazing performance by Edson, thirty-seven years old, looks like he's carved out of, out of a piece of teak. Uh, I've always been a fan of Edson, so I was really, really pleased to uh, see him uh, get that uh, that result. Oh yeah, no, he's always a good fighter, and he's always trying to win. And he's not like yeah. he's not kind of like taking half-assed performances either. He's he's either falling on his shield or making somebody fall on theirs. You know, yeah. And that's a guy you can appreciate. Yeah, yeah, he always brings it. And just looking at. Like I said, I might get the points, but that was 18 points. 15 points, we had Rodolfo Bellato versus Iho Potiera. Uh, yeah, Ihor, Ihor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ihor, is it? Sorry, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm not good on the spelling for that one. Uh, or the pronunciation, I get the spelling. Um, that 15 points for that. Uh, that was the Darius Sorry, you can... Uh, yeah, uh, that's that. That was the one where it's like you're you're looking one way. Everybody hated him still because of that, even though he had lost already. <laughs> But everybody still hated it because of that whole he's the duelist. So he because he, he killed a Shogun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he you know, everybody's still holding a candle for Shogun. So it's like it, when he murdered Shogun in Brazil and like, why, why would you give him this guy like Shogun deserves to kind of retire on his own without mm-hmm. having to go against a newcomer that nobody knows. And that like yeah. the way he was knocked out, too, is just they didn't make it easier. And then this guy gets beaten you know, by um, another light heavyweight um, and then comes into here and you're seeing him beat up this heavyweight. That just looks like he's, he's a, a heavyweight who just cut weight, <laughs> like a big man. And you could kind of see it on his uh, torso, a lot of loose skin, but yeah. it was funny because they're like looking at the fight. Oh my God, he's going to finish him. How has he not been finished? How has this fight not been stopped? This should probably stop this fight. I don't understand why they're not stopping this fight. Oh my God, they're not going to stop this fight. <laughs> <laughs> we get into the next like couple inter- like exchanges and he's still like getting beaten up and it's like oh my god this is a one-sided beating how is it not over yet and then he comes back and just starts wailing on him and then he like he- igor pateria is just covering up like oh shit then he ends up on his back on the mat and it's just a couple of not even heavy punches he's just constantly throwing hands into his face <laughs> yeah. calls it you're like I don't- what the fuck what <laughs> Uh, yeah, I must have, that, that fight pretty much must have skated uh, past my uh, attention. Uh, it's a prelim fight, and you definitely need to watch it. <laughs> uh, I almost certainly saw it, but it obviously just didn't stick in my head for uh, whatever reason. Yes, although Edson yeah, Barbosa yeah. definitely earned the major should have uh, earned properly earned more points than that because it was it's a main event, it's a performance, 
that mm -hmm. you can't argue against, especially with the veteran. Like, absolutely, ten eighted in the first round, arguably ten nine to the next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's one of those. That it could very easily have been a draw that fight, and I don't think anyone would have complained too I much did. if it. Had I think been I had draw. it a draw. I think I had it a yeah. draw. But you know, again, it's like it. The fact that he survived after that first round, it's like Frankie Edgar versus yeah. Gray Vayner. <laughs> Just like out. Yeah. I mean, he, he got. He got his head almost knocked off. Uh, knocked off. He got really, really rocked. You could see his legs had gone out from underneath him. Yeah. And then he ended up down on the floor with about three minutes of control guy uh, time for uh, Yusef. So, uh, yeah, just an amazing comeback from uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and uh, we, we did skim over this one because it only got twelve points. It was Gaethje versus Fiziev at UFC two eight six. Great, uh, fight. which I, I thought was a pretty good. Uh, it was a great fight and. Uh, it was Pretty close. I thought, I thought it was close. It was, I thought it was close going into that third round, you know, but again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was, I thought it was clearly one round each. It could have could have gone either way in that third round. Yeah. <clears throat> but Gaethje proved some uh, quality there. and uh, Absolutely, yeah. Nailed the win. That, that's one of the fights that really annoys me because uh, I stupidly didn't follow my own gut feeling, which was that Gaethje would get it done. And I followed the, uh, the crowd and uh, ended up throwing a vote on... Uh, Fiziev for a thing, and then Gaethje won, obviously, which I wasn't unhappy that he'd won. It just cost me a point on the picks. So <laughs> hurt my percentage a little more. Uh, but yeah. And uh, just, I guess, uh, the last two we had uh, Pereira versus Israel Adesanya 2, uh, 287, which got 23 points, uh, which I guess is the, the comeback in the terms of the fact that Adesanya had lost the previous, he'd lost his belt and the previous bout. Uh, so I guess he, it, it, I guess it's kind of deserving in its points. I mean, he was losing. Um, he clearly lost the first. Was I think it went two, if I'm not mistaken, right? I can't remember offhand. I believe it went two rounds, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. I think but it must have done, yeah. Yeah, because he's losing the first, and then like in the second, it's the same thing. Because Izzy's circling back, doing the same thing, except he's not throwing nearly as much. Mm -hmm. He's getting hit and he's getting hurt. Leg kicks are affecting him. He seems very timid, and then that's when Pereira pushes really hard on the finish because he's got him against the cage and he's not moving and that's when izzy counters him i to me i understand why it's the second in the second option on here mm -hmm. honestly it makes sense yeah. um it, it, I, it, I don't it, hate it by any means no it, it, i think it more or less is the story i think in my opinion but even then it's like you gotta you can't you know it, it has a place on here for sure not my, yeah. not my top choice, but no. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this, I, I know, for, I, I can't remember how many vote, how many points we were allowed to vote. I think this was one where you got three choices, wasn't it? I think a majority. Um, I, you could do that for all of them, but it goes yeah. three, two, and then one. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 the screen I'm looking at now, I can see one of the fights that I asked uh, PB to put onto here. As uh, I think, as uh, which was a Sun Tao versus Davy Grant, which only got three points, uh, but it had that amazing, amazing finish at the end by Davy Grant. Uh, yeah. he, he had a he had a point taken away from him, uh, and it looked like the it blown. He'd, they had that position change, didn't they? Yeah, uh, they, the they did. Yeah, that was the thing. Again. Yep. Yeah, because there were a lot of complaints about that, and then Davy Grant sunk in that inverted triangle and got yeah. the win in the last 45 you know 15 seconds of the fight or whatever it was i think it was one of the latest finish in 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 uh in the year to be honest uh certainly certainly in that division absolutely uh, but, yeah. yeah but uh but we'll actually go back onto the one who did win it which was of course valentina shevchenko versus alexa grasso uh who came back as you said uh you know she'd she'd lost i think the previous three rounds pretty much she was definitely... she won the first she won the first round yeah. but it was she was losing the second she mm -hmm. lost the second and third because yeah. shevchenko had turned up her kickboxing a little bit more and had started wrestling more and grasso his her grappling defense like at least you know takedown wise was non-existent nearly and she's just falling to her back hardly even putting up a defense for it and at, at, you're kind of looking at it like okay shit she's losing the fight it's going to go to a decision shevchenko's slowly but surely yeah, gaining more win. momentum going into the four going into the fifth and then that's when she mm -hmm. catches her yeah. off of that spinning yeah. back kick and it's like oh shit yeah. <laughs> like there it is there it is right yeah. 
a pretty deserving winner, I think, when you look at it that way. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, congratulations, Alexa Grasso. Yes. So, yeah. 30, 33 points for that one. A, a clear 10-point lead. Uh, yeah. But not, yeah, so, as I say, deserving. Uh, let me have a look. What have we got next? Oh, I think we have actually submission of the year now. Um. I think we'll, we'll we'll do the. I know you've got the. I don't know if you've got the the uh, sheet open, uh, Austin, but we might as well do the um, top four. I, think, I guess. Oh, in fact, well, let's have a look. Oh God, uh, we've got the one I've just mentioned: uh, Sun Sal versus Davy Grant uh, with the inverted triangle that got nine points. Uh, we have another triangle in uh, just one point ahead of that: Yaya Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett. Uh, yeah, and then I guess we go on to the big numbers after that. Unless you want to talk about any of those. Uh, no, of you those you fights. you said everything that would that I would have honestly yeah. said about a Sun Sal. That fight honestly just was like, yeah, it was it was a Sun Sal kind of like it, I think it was supposed to be his. It wasn't was it was it his retirement fight that night? It might have been. I'm not sure. Uh, if if not, then you know, David Grant basically pulled a win, pulled a win out of his ass and managed to get yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, you know, I, Joe... I like Davy Grant. He's, oh, he's no, a yeah. nice guy. He seems like a fun guy. So, oh yeah, especially him being a bantamweight from the UK. Like that guy, you know, if there was ever a replacement for hands, uh, for Brad One Punch Pickett, that it would be Davy Grant. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, good choice. Good choice. Yeah. And then um, the Yair Rodriguez Rush Josh Emmett fight. Like realistically, like Yair was was running him over, managed to somehow give Josh Emmett, who had refused to be a smart fighter in that fight, <laughs> um, essentially opportunities to knock him down. However, y- Yair Rodriguez was able to pick himself back up, pick him apart, damage him, I think, more than anybody else I've seen damage him, aside from yeah. uh, Jeremy Stevens. Um, hashtag uh, metal plate in the head. <laughs> but, um, no, realistically, I have... You know, I have an issue with John Jones versus Serial Gone being on here just because <laughs> and I'm gonna be a stickler again for this one. It's not an issue for me that he's on the list. It's an issue for me that he's as high up on the list. To me, it meant nothing. To me, it would have meant more had it been in Ganu, had it been Steep A. Hell, had it been anybody else, but unfortunately it was Gone, who's not a submission fighter. Granted. It's, yeah. you know, he's won with submissions yeah. before, and it's not surprising that John Jones submitted a guy who has, you know, very little grappling, yeah. you know. I, I, may you, I may owe you an apology then, Austin, because th- I'm pretty sure I put this down as my uh, as my submission of the year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, just because of how, uh, just because of how fast it happened. And uh, this was another one of those fights where um, certainly I was in two minds. It was a pretty close pick on the betting, I think, in the Discord. Yeah. And uh, I, I was... I think it was one of the fights I only picked a couple of hours, you know, before the picks closed. And I went, no, it's it's going to be Jones. He's going to get this done. I just didn't expect him to do it in two minutes flat. Uh, and I didn't expect Gan to roll over quite that easily. No, uh, he basically stumbled and forgot everything he was taught, if he was taught yeah. anything at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a rabbit in the headlights that night. He was just overpowered, I think, by the circumstances you know it's like oh shit that's john jones in the fucking cage next to me uh, and, and i've got to beat this guy and he's you know he's the goat yeah uh, agree despite the fact he'd never fought at heavyweight before but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. three years uh, three yeah, years eight, 18, 18 points for that one uh, yes now on to help, the actual help, contenders help <laughs> yeah the, the the actual top three uh in third place with 20 points damon blackshear versus yeah, jo- Jose Johnson, who uh, Damon Blacksphere, I believe this is only the third twister in the entirety of the UFC existence. Uh, it was a uh, Korean zombie got the first, and Bryce Mitchell got the second. Yeah, if I'm if I recall correctly. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, put that one on a, tri- on a trivia quiz somewhere. In fact, it might have already been on a trivia quiz. Somewhere. Editor, editor, uh, we have another one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, so yeah, I, I deserved. I think it deserves its place. I, I I I don't think it deserved first place. Obviously, it's a very unusual submission. Absolutely, and yeah, all credit. It's to, not easy. It's, to it's get, one of the. Yeah. I, I'd almost like someone to put me in a twister so I can f- feel what it feels like because it, yeah. it's one of those weird looking submissions. It doesn't really look like it should do anything. It's pressure but on. They're it, horrendously it, painful. It is. Well, yeah, it, 
I've never been put in one, but I've been put in similar positions, and it's mm-hmm. usually because you're like it's the the amount of pressure on your torso and your hips going the opposite yeah. way, and that's the thing. Like it's it feels yeah. like you're being you know pulled in two. Yeah. That's the thing. In half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's deserving. It's a it's a hard submission yeah. to get, anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny. Oh, oh, Bryce Mitchell, who was recently sent to the one, land of wind and ghosts. I remember him play uh, fighting Charles Rosa, and he spent 15 minutes trying to get Rosa into a twister, having already had one in his previous fight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> couldn't manage to do it, but he did have the most dominating uh, grappling performance that night. Yes, he uh, did. And it would have so, been yeah. the first one. So, I did a deserved position, I think, at three, but I'd, I, I can see why the other two uh, that are above it got much better scores. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> second place, thirty-six point. We've already discussed it a lot already. Uh, Alexa Grasso getting the face crank against Shevchenko. Uh, thirty-six points. I, I don't. Do we really need to go over it again? This one? No, nah, I think it's just yeah. you know, especially against. Uh, that's the thing where it's like, had Gone done that to John, okay, it would have been insane. I think that's along the same lines as what Alexa did to uh, Shevchenko. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think it's deserving yeah. in second place for sure. Yeah. And then in top place, 39 points. So I guess theoretically this could get overtaken uh, between now and tomorrow because I think that's when the vert- voting actually or closes. Or tied. <laughs> or tied, yeah. We have uh, Shavkat Rachmanov getting the standing rear naked choke. Uh, bully choke, I think uh, someone called it as well, against Jeff Neal, which was, uh, was it third round? Yeah, uh, it was about a yeah. minute left in the fight and... Oh, close to it. Shavkat had almost given up a round, I think. I thought he was winning, but regardless, mm-hmm. Shavkat like, decided to fight the hard fight. He could have done the yeah. easier fight, but for some reason he was... And it's not that Jeff Neal wasn't you know, fighting uh, an easy fight at all. Like He, he was getting clipped. He was hurting Shavkat mm-hmm. as well. The yeah, takedown, definitely. The takedown defense definitely was there for uh, Jeff Neal. However, Jeff Neal did miss weight, so I don't know if that played a factor into it. So mm-hmm. at the at the during the fight, Shavkat was just you know either he was clean clean shotting Jeff Neal or he was just playing the harder fight, you know, staying in the clinch longer than he needed to, taking a bigger shots when he didn't probably need to exchange more or extend this exchanges longer. Yeah, Shavkat definitely showed that he was about that life, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, the hell, the man wears a dead wolf on his head. <laughs> That's not about that life. I don't know what is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, deserved, deserved winner. I, I have no problems with uh, the donk picking this one as a yeah, submission. Agreed. The, uh, agreed. Uh, yeah, agreed. Agreed. And this was what we were on about, or what I was on about earlier with the awards, wasn't it? You know, we had the uh, Shavkat, um, Alexa Grasso, and uh, Gan all from 285. Uh, who held three out of the top four submission of the year uh, nominations? Uh, so yeah. So three, <laughs> so again, if you pick UFC to eight four, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> it's never gonna let it go. <laughs> I'm not. No, it's it's like it's like Cyril Gan. You know, I'm never gonna let him go as well. So, especially now. Uh, you know, I, especially now. Now there's a proper French fight, fighter out there with uh, Benoit Sandini, who I think will come up later uh, in our. Uh, discussions yeah we'll, we'll get to it yeah <laughs> and let's have a look let's have a look at this because the next one is knockout of the year and more in fact i'll ignore the ones that got zero points we had one point aljamain sterling versus sean o'malley uh where o'malley landed that beautiful straight right and knocked aljo de- uh aljo down but i i don't even count this as a knockout no nah, it mattered I, it was a wrong area really- I it think was it was slightly down. an early stoppage. He yeah. was turtling over to try and stop getting punched in the face. And uh, wasn't it Goddard who refereed this one? Uh, yeah. I, I think he possibly yeah. jumped the gun a little bit. He could have given Aljo a, at least a few more seconds to try and recover. Yeah, I don't think it would have mattered. But at the same time, you have to give the champion at least some mm-hmm. some ability to fight out of a bad situation. Unfortunately, yeah. you did not get that. And again, you know, it was a clean shot. Aljo walked into it. He's mm-hmm. not the better striker. Not sure why he decided to engage the way he did, but you know, no. it is what it is. So yeah, so I'm glad he only got one point anyway. So. <laughs> Fair enough. God, look at the names on this bugger. It's from it's from KSW Coliseum too. So it only got one point. I'm not even going to. Blitzkloff Glovaki versus Patrick Tolkazuski, uh, one by punch. 
unsurprisingly, as primarily a UFC follower, I did not see this fight, so I have no idea how good the knockout was. Uh, I don't know if you saw it or not, Austin. No, no. As a matter of no. fact, I forgot KSW was a thing this year. <laughs> Oh, get out, get out. But that's, that's not because KSW is bad. They're actually pretty fun. They're like uh, they? they're they're oh, literally they're, they're literally Bellator on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they are. Just, just Polish, yeah? just Polish version. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Right. Yeah, I'll have to keep my eye out and see if I can catch one 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 of these days. Uh, and I know, I, th- I know this one got a bit of uh, attention. This is Sadi Barsu versus Shane Mitchell, uh, spinning wheel kick. But it happened at a PFL event, so I didn't see it because I can't stand the PFL. You actually um, don't need to see the entire fight. The highlight is pretty much it. And then honestly, yeah, it's, it's Sadabusi, a big lanky striker who had won the year previously, was on course to winning this year, and then just got ran over. Like you, There's not much you could say to it. Like He beat yeah. a guy who didn't probably need to be there, but you know, hey, you get the knockout, you get to the, main, you get to the uh, next round, more or less. And also on three points, it's one I, mean, I did mention a little bit earlier when we were talking about Edson Barboza. It was the when he knocked out uh, Billy Quant- Quarantillo with the knee strike. Yep. Uh, beautifully timed. Uh, I remember watching that fight and you saw uh, Billy kind of rush in and the next minute he's laying on the floor and you're like, what the hell just happened? Yep. Uh, so. He walked into it, unfortunately, with his head down. Like You can't, you can't do that against a guy whose whole thing is Muay Thai. You know, mm-hmm. like it, it done it. It done the same entry to a uh, takedown, I think, once or twice before. And you can't do that with someone like Edson Barboza. He is no. going to see that habit and he's he's going to be waiting there with the knee. And he was. So, yep. yeah, beautiful knockout by Edson. Like I said, Absolutely. Edson has two fantastic fights that year. Uh, he's definitely my veteran fighter of the year. Yeah, that should be his category next. <laughs> next yeah. year. <laughs> Next uh, year, hey, you know, uh, yeah. next time, yeah, yeah we'll be right later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then five points, we had a, another. It's a Bellator fight, so yet again, I didn't see it. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to say on that one. Lorenz uh, Larkin versus Mukhamed Berkamov. No, nah, only only that Larkin has. It's weird. Larkin was a guy who was on a a, a run in Bellator and looking pretty good. Uh, the only problem was is that Larkin kind of shoots himself in the foot at times. You know, as a fighter, this was not one of those times. <laughs> he he <laughs> laid this dude out, and I'm pretty sure Larkin was not a favorite in this fight at all. So, yeah. you know, if he then especially when you're fighting a you know a grappler or just a striker of the caliber that these guys are coming out of Dagestan and Eastern Europe, a lot is on the line, especially with an older fighter and veteran in Larkin. The fact that he got this knockout against this guy, you know, is not easy to do. You know. Mm-hmm. Good for him, you know. It, it you gotta you gotta have things to kind of have people reasons for people to keep watching you. If you could give these kind of highlights, especially outside the UFC, you're definitely going to be in a better shape, uh, state. Well, just think he could never have got that KO in PFL because it was an elbow. That's uh. <laughs> so true. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is very true. <laughs> no elbows. Sorry, PFL. Yeah. Put some elbows. Yeah. Then maybe we'll watch you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then uh, after that, uh, nine points. Israel, uh, Ismail, sorry, Israel, uh, Ismail Bonfirm versus Terence McKitty, That flying knee, which was a beautiful one. UFC two eight three. Um, Bonfirm, you know, proving that he is genuinely good. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, he ended, he ended up losing. KO. Yeah, he got his. He ended up losing, losing the next fight. But no, this is the. Uh... This is the one where you're like, you know, he was a decent guy that you're going to throw in there and he's going to cause chaos in the division for sure. Uh, and then squeaking in with one point just ahead of it, which again, I'm kind of pleased in certain respects. Uh, Islam Makachev versus Alexander Vol- Volkanovsky 2 with the head kick and the hammer fists at UFC 294. Uh, this is the, quite, quite funny because I know if uh, when we used to do the don't cast, if you go back and check, uh, I predicted that Islam Makachev would win the first fight by head kick KO, and he did land one in the first round and really rattled Volk. And foolishly, I didn't pick it, pick that he'd do it again in the second fight, and of course he did. So I got the right result. I was just six months late. That was all. <clears throat> <laughs> so true. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Short, short notice uh, KO. Uh, great KO. Don't get me wrong, but again, it were I. It's a better KO than uh, O'Malley's was, 
but I don't think it was it deserved a top spot. So I'm pleased it didn't get ranked no, super high by the donks. Especially the way it ended, because you're seeing Volk and the I think the circumstances surrounding it, like the short notice, um, mm-hmm. ideal yeah, like ten days notice, and yeah, you know, jumped off the couch and jumped into a fight. Yeah, uh, yeah. We will be going, we will be mentoring this this a bit later, I think. So I won't go any further on that one. Uh, <laughs> did you see Bellator two nine five? Uh, yeah, so I saw this this fight in particular, uh, although it was on, um, I saw it afterwards, but uh, not live. I should point out to anyone listening, this is Raphael Stotts versus Patchy Mix. Uh, yeah, so it, it basically yeah. was just, he kind of went in for the takedown and immediately got <laughs> 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 I, yeah. You can't argue anything with it, because he gets him yeah. like on the way out too, he just goes, bah! like he hits yeah. him with the knee and then one more punch on the outside. You forget how big... Um, um, patchy mixes. He is a big bantamweight. He is not small. Yeah. Unlike O'Malley, he also is an offensive grappler, and that's the thing. Like he's he's the more dangerous version of O'Malley because O'Malley is only striking heavy. He's not a mm-hmm. submission grappler. He is not a defensive submission grappler. However, you know he he hasn't been submitted yet. The um, the problem with it, O'Malley is that he's a big linking guy that doesn't seem to handle damage very well. Patchy mixes so the opposite. Not the legs, no. No, it's off, not the legs either. But that's the thing is that like, <laughs> Patchy mix is your guy that honestly is probably your most dangerous bantamweight and probably the number one bantamweight currently. Yeah. I will take your word for that, my friend. Yes, um, sir. Yeah. Uh, squeaking in just ahead of it, I know for a fact I nominated this one for one of the knockouts of the year. This was Joe Selecki versus Drakkar Close with the head slam, which was just. Beautiful to see, and of course was followed by another one in the next fight. Not quite as good as Closes. Uh, no, yeah. But, I mean, I, I don't know how many of these there have been in the UFC, but there can't be very many, and there's certainly never been two in the same night. No, well, the fact that this one was more like it looked like he he was picking up a, a sledgehammer, <laughs> <laughs> and Joe Joe looks up for a second, and you could see the look of like ah oh, shit as he's coming <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> like like this is the it was the whole thing we were discussing on that night uh on the recap um was you you don't sacrifice your position for the submission if you are air baller. <laughs> you know like come on cuz yeah, you, 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 yeah. what are you what are you doing come on you know like he gave like and that was that was a good thing for close cuz close hadn't fought for like 2 years after the whole Jeremy Stevens incident where he pushes him and he like gets injured because of the push and it like induces vomiting. Oh, that the one where he, where he got the um, whiplash on his neck? Yep. That was it. Yeah. Uh, and he hadn't fought since then. Since then, geez, uh, Stevens is, was in a, you know uh, the PFL and now I think he's going to be in bare knuckle or something like that. I think he's in yeah. bare, bare knuckle now. But, you know, that's like, for two years. Jeremy, of... Jeremy Stevens, who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, exactly. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> but no, good for close. He needed that. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I think I think I'd, I might have voted that as my top KO of the year. If not, it was definitely my second uh, vote. Yeah, agreed. Uh, and then we had uh, third place, 28 points, Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira. Uh, the, the punches, we have already discussed it. It was a great KO. Um, I'm surprised it didn't get higher, to be honest. Although I guess it is only four points behind uh, the next place one. Uh, so, but I'm happy with its position, third place. I don't think it deserved to win. So, I don't know about you. Nah, I, I mean, I think it's it. more of a circumstance of like, because we're talking, um... it's story versus the actual yeah. punch kind of thing itself, isn't it? Uh, it was a good knockout, but I, just, mm-hmm. I think that's the thing. Oh, it's yeah. like the story actually carries it more. Um, into what it was and the fact that he was losing the fight prior to that you know i don't think that i think that helps it mm-hmm. you know yeah. makes it makes it more of a oh shit kind of moment <laughs> especially at the high levels yeah yeah I, I think somebody was arguing about this on the discord uh, you know saying that people are rating uh things like ko's and um submissions more on the story that's attached to them than the actual strike or submission itself which Kind of a fair argument, I guess, but you can't really ignore it. No, and, well, that's the other thing too, is that like, like uh, in the instance, like you can honestly be okay with putting John 
uh, and Cyril Ghosn as submission of the year because of who John is and mm-hmm. the fact that it's at heavyweight. Return after three yeah. years, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, you should be also willing to accept that Grasso and versus you know Shevchenko mm-hmm. one is the, also a submission of the year for the same reason. It's Shevchenko yeah. getting submitted. That's it's that's it's not that's something that's story happened. when it comes yeah. down to it yeah exactly yeah. if you're gonna go off of that like that's the same basics you know but if you're going off off a of technique okay but you got to be able to give us something else other than oh it's a fancy submission on a no name that fighter you know yeah that's yeah. the thing you can't you know you can't have you know one be more favored than the other you have to be able to give both the opportunity and you know you grade off of that yeah i'm yawning here now um, <laughs> So yeah, second place we have Josh Emmett versus Bryce Mitchell, the overrun overhand right that sent Bryce Mitchell to the land of ghosts, twitching. Uh, one of the worst KOs I've ever seen in my life, to be honest. In the cage, um, people generally don't even react like that when they've been kicked in the head. So to to get it from a straight right and just messed Bryce Mitchell up. Yeah, this is quite a funny thing. I, I had I had all these picked out. Uh, kind of uh, up to a month before uh, the polls were done, and uh, then Klaus and bloody Emmett came in and destroyed everything as as to how I was going to uh, make my picks. Uh, this is true. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if you saw the thing with Bryce Mitchell talking about this, uh, saying that once he was up on his feet, they should have had him out of the cage straight away, uh, which I thought was a great point from uh, our favourite flat earther. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you, yeah. you would have thought that the uh, common sense would have come back yeah. after being knocked out, you know. <laughs> but, hey, not everybody can remember. <laughs> he, he, he said the first thing, first thing he remembered is he's waking up in the ambulance, which yep. is not surprising. Uh, no, that sounds about I, I, right. I, I think it might have been Mike, Mike Bisping uh, who said it once. He was, he was back in the dressing room after he'd been knocked out. And he, he jumped up and he was like, right, when's the fight? When's the fight starting? And they were like, Mike, you've already had the fight. You, you you lost. You've been knocked out. You're back in the changing room. Uh, uh, having never been knocked out by a punch like that, I've no, no. idea what 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 the effects are of uh, that kind of blow. But I can fully understand that you don't remember what happened. No, <clears throat> no. Sometimes you miss pieces because I've been knocked out before. Like you 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 yeah. essentially just miss time. Like it's just it mm-hmm. just disappears from your conscience. Like you you remember moments before. But that's about it. And even then, it's like you can miss like the entirety of a section behind it or before it. And like it, it just it just depends, you know, some are worse than others. But also it's just a matter of what the shock value that comes off of it. This one was more shocking after the fact, not like, oh, my God, he's dead. He just did instant one shot KO. Right. Yeah. It's the it's the convulsing on the canvas afterwards. And yeah. then the fact that they had the camera on him and then. Oh shit! We should probably not show that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, was I think that was they put it on him for that long. To be honest, they don't yeah. generally. The USC are generally very good about that. Usually, yeah, but you know, sometimes yeah. they like the shock value. They fumbled the bag on that one as, a little uh, bit, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, but actual knockout of the year voted for by the donks, which I fully approve of. I can't remember, like I said, I can't remember if I voted for this one or close as the. Uh, my KO of the year, but it was certainly my second choice, if not my first. The uh, Justin Gaethje lands his first ever H- head kick KO at USC 291 against Dustin Poirier. Uh, <laughs> this one this one always amuses me because Kamara Usman was in the crowd watching this and he saw done to Justin Poirier as exactly what happened to him just about a year earlier by Leon Edwards. Um Yes. Yeah, 43, 43 points, a pretty clear winner, 11 points ahead. No, nah, well, because there's a joke that um, Dustin was talking to, uh, not a joke per se, but it, it was a funny thing that came up afterwards where uh, a reporter by the name of Jose Youngs came up to him and asked, he saw, uh, so Justin Gaethje never throws kicks, you know, kind of surprising, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dustin Absolutely. just had to sit there and he was like, yeah, he never throws kicks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's quite funny, actually. I, I watched the Fazir fight earlier on today, uh, and Gaethje actually threw a head, the same head kick or a very similar head kick at Fazir. Obviously, it didn't land on uh, Fazir, but it's certainly, certainly, but it's not a, a strike he throws very often. I think it was rare, and well, because it, I think it was something where 
he had picked it up in training for Usman to practice with and against for right defend yeah, and use possible, yeah. address it because he's he's the only other striker that can simulate you know the ability mm-hmm. of you know being powerful in that sense I guess because I mean they could have brought, probably brought in Shafkat but Usman would have probably had to fight Shafkat so what's the next yeah. best case scenario just bring in a guy it's not like they bring in a bunch of people anyways so. I think that was the thing, and realistically, it's not it's not something he's ever been privy to. He's usually looking for low kicks against the calf mm-hmm. or against the thigh, right? Yeah, and he's dangerous yeah. with that. So, just oh, him. God, yeah, I mean, he's arguably throw. the most dangerous leg kicker in the game at the moment. Yeah, uh, next to Edson Barbosa. <laughs> and yeah, o- and exactly, Jose Aldo yeah, prior prior yeah, to his yeah. uh, injury. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. two of my favorite fights. I do love leg kick finishes and <laughs> I don't know why I like them so much but uh, I just think it's so impressive that you blast someone's leg that they can't stand on their own two feet anymore and they have to just lay on the floor and yeah. then you can just step back and go get up motherfucker get up uh, and you're like exactly. no I, d- I don't want to get up <laughs> no not anymore now you've, you've destroyed my leg I don't think I'm going to be able to walk for three months I now I've had enough at this point yeah uh, please let me go home absolutely <laughs> So yeah, congratulations to just uh, this. Oh, we'll we'll, we'll go, I was going to say something then, but we'll be going on to it. I think later. Yeah. Uh, in fact, in fact, quite possibly. In fact, yeah, one of the uh, next because we are running out of categories. I think now. Uh, shall we Fight do the, the top year. five top five fights of the year? Yeah. Because like, we're we're going to be able to skim through uh, several of them very, very quickly. Uh, we had uh, Valentina Shevchenko, Alexa Grasso, yet again uh, received eight points. Uh, I'm not surprised. It, I don't. I don't think it deserved to be in the top. You know, much higher than it was in the rankings. Uh, I well, yeah, because it's the first fight, and the first fight was very competitive. Uh, at mm-hmm. least in you know for what were we, what we were watching and the finish kind of adds to that so if you're talking about an exciting fight that's definitely one of them and uh, it's more exciting that the finish happened the way it did so yeah that helps it a little bit mm-hmm. however then, well, Jeff, yeah oh, go on, Karen. Karen. <laughs> i was gonna say go however on, the next the one that's next to it right that's uh <laughs> with 18 points <laughs> it's a completely different yeah. story it's a back yeah, and forth. yeah yeah battle that ends abruptly yeah. mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, don't think... I genuinely thought Shavkat was going to lose his uh, streak of finishing every fight on this one uh, it looked looked as if he wasn't going to get it done and then of course he, he did that uh, there's also that beautiful moment because this was on the uh, Jones versus Gan card yep um, and uh, he did to Jeff Neal more or less what uh, John Jones had done to um Machida. Machida, yeah. Uh, just, you know, let his hands go and then you look around and Jeff Neal's laying on the floor. I know, I think he did try and tap, but obviously the the choke, the blood choke just kicked, kicked in just fast enough to send him unconscious and send him Absolutely, sprawling. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> he did not stand a chance. Uh, no. So, yeah, very good fight, but uh, I think it's uh, fairly placed again at, at fourth place. Agreed. Uh, and we have, yeah, we have just been discussing it, Justin Gaethje versus Fiziev. Which it was a great fight, a three round war. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, because you're looking at, you know, Justin kind of like, all right, he's the veteran. He's got to defend his spot. If yeah. he doesn't, if he doesn't defend it, he did the opposite of what, you know, Dustin Poirier did. Dustin Poirier was not willing to defend his spot against uh, a non name, uh, a yeah. younger contender. Justin actually defended it and beat him. And, yeah. you know, it was a hard fight. It, that's Absolutely. that's yeah, that's all it, you can had lost, had lost the previous fight, hadn't he? And then yep. he, he went he went down the rankings to take to take on an up and comer uh, in Rafael Fiziev, and then of course he beat him, uh, which is why he's back up in the rankings and uh, deservedly so, in my opinion. Absolutely. But yeah, it was a great fight. Um, Fiziev's face at the end of it was just a mess. Uh, yeah, really especially like, like especially at the and, end. Uh, uh, and also worth noting that this was Justin Justin Gaethje's takedown at the end of round three was his first ever takedown in the UFC, which is just hilarious, uh, given how you know you used to be a wrestler and all the rest of that stuff. Yeah, he was a very accomplished wrestler. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. He was an yeah, all American, and mm-hmm. <laughs> that tends to happen with good wrestlers. Sometimes they <laughs> they fall in love with their fall hands. In love with their hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, Gaethje, Gaethje, as you said, he, he didn't want to be a dull fighter. He has lived up to his name, hasn't he? The highlight. I mean, yeah. I, I can't be bothered to look it up now, but what's he got? About 15 bonuses or something? Yeah. Um, yeah. Almost just... like considering how he already had a, a decent career going but prior to that. <laughs> yeah. Tends to either get fight of the night or KO of the night or whatever the hell it is, Gaethje. He's, you know, gets those yeah. 50 grand bonuses very nicely. Oh, yeah. And deservedly so. Uh, he really does live up live up to his nickname. Yes, uh, sir. And then we have, to, yeah. And then close behind him, in or close in front of him, sorry, in second place, Brandon Moreno versus Alejandro Pantoja three at UFC two ninety. Which annoyingly, I don't remember very much about this fight. I should have uh, I should have watched it before we did the show. Um, You're talking about it must have been... yeah. It, it was it was actually very. If you're talking about Pantoja showing up and just kind of doing the same thing he did uh, against Royval, like it's mm-hmm. it's Pantoja. Funnily enough, is just this dog. This was the night yeah. that he also said, "Are you proud of me now, Dad? Are you proud of me?" Yeah. <laughs> like, ah, <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> Suck at my heartstrings, will you? <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to remember if it was a close fight or. Oh no! It was it was back and forth. the The problem was is that for every time Moreno would actually hurt Pantoja, Pantoja would just eat the punches and just kind of walk forward like a zombie. And the grappling exchanges were were intense, like they were going back and forth. And Pantoja would do the same thing he did to Royval, where he just hold on to the position and then look for a submission if available. If not, he was happy to stay yeah. in the position. Once they were on the feet. Moreno had the better, quicker combinations, but Pantoja had the steadiness and the power. Occasionally, Pantoja would get wobbled, but not nearly as bad as Moreno did. So, like, if Moreno, like Royval did in their fight, was landing a great combination, keeping his distance, like, you know, putting pressure onto Pantoja to kind of circle out, Pantoja would land this haymaker and drop Moreno. And it wouldn't matter. All of a sudden, Pantoja is on top of him looking for a submission. It was a great fight. Definitely not the yeah. fight of the year, but one of the... F- I think it was like, mm-hmm. you could argue number two for sure. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think I kept getting it mixed up with the uh, recent uh, Alexander uh, Pantoja fight, which... Yeah, trust me. Go watch him. Go watch that one back. You're, it's, yeah. a, it's a great fight to watch, for sure. I will have to. But uh, anyway, the clear winner for fight of the year was Islam Makachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky. It should only be this one and nothing else. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I kind of liked uh, Gaethje versus Fiziev in certain respects. But uh, yeah, I can say this really was a back and forth battle, wasn't it? Um, Well, because a lot of of controversy where a lot of people saying that Volk won this fight. Well, um, the only reason why you say that is because of the way Islam looked in the cage. Like, he was getting hurt a lot more than he usually yeah. does. Or at, Islam never looks like he's hurt ever. And on top no. of it, the fact that, like, the grappling exchanges were almost, you know, 60-40. You know? Mm-hmm. Islam's getting the positions, but not able to do anything with them. With them. Yeah. And then at certain points, Volk is transitioning to be in dominant positions. He's winning some of the yeah. grappling exchanges, right? Yeah. And that's the thing where it's like we all assumed Islam was going to roll over Volkanovski because yeah, I, I think I think I said I said it wouldn't go past the second round. Yeah, um, and that's Islam the thing. Would have been out there in no time. And that's the thing. You're looking at this fight like, oh damn, Volk showed up. Oh damn, he's mm-hmm. he's winning. Oh shit, he hurt him. Um, but especially that last thirty seconds where Volk is raining punches from standing yeah. position on top of uh, islam who's got his guard up you know putting his hands up trying to get back you know uh, to you know defend himself it, yeah it, it was one of those fights where maybe if there'd been 30 40 seconds left volt might have got it done you never know oh no yeah and that's the thing that's the best part about that fight is that it's just you're you're looking at it like goddamn, like it was a great fight to watch especially a championship level mm-hmm. fight yeah yeah i i, I wonder if it's I think probably I rated it slightly lower than the Gaethje versus Fiziev fight because I'd rather watch Gaethje versus Fiziev uh, fight. You know, it's more entertaining for me to watch that. It was a stand-up brawl. There wasn't so much of the grappling and 
you know, because we had that, was it the entire third round where Volk was just wrapped up uh, doing those silly little back punches that everyone was trying to give him the round for? Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I think that's the other half yeah. of it is that, like, you're, it's not constant action, it's high-level mm -hmm. uh, chess match. And I think yeah. where it's, Vaziev is uh, versus Gaethje is more like, no, there it's a war of attrition. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. That definitely adds yeah. to the fight. Yeah. But yeah. I, I can't really argue with it too much. Uh, it was a great fight. It's probably just my bias slightly. Uh, just eh. being a Gaethje fanboy to some degree. Eh, that's not bad. Uh, <laughs> so at least you admit it. Most people don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll freely admit I'm a bit of a fanboy for uh, some of my uh, fighters. Definitely fight of the year, though, for sure. The uh, The... Justin Gaethje uh, is uh, is is close to that with the uh, Fiziev, but definitely if you're just going to talk about performances, you know, mm -hmm. Islam versus Volk definitely takes it for sure. Shall we jump onto the next one? Breakthrough Absolutely. fight of the year. Yeah, let's have a look. Shall we? There's a, there's quite a few on this one, and there's some fair. Well, uh, do we want to start? Shall we start? And give a shout out to a lady, Erin Blanchfield. Uh, racked up ten points. Uh, I th I think she kind of deserved. Maybe a slightly higher spot than she's been given. Um, I think so I too. She, but wait, wait, yeah, would I you... know her last fight wasn't that exciting because it was a lot of pushing. Uh, I forget who she fought now. But I know one of our members back. would say he she should be punished because she had one boring performance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see our, uh, or I can almost hear our editor swearing at us on this. One, so <laughs> no, he, he didn't like the uh, the result of this fight very much. Of course not. No, but hey. Yeah. You're you're beating the best people in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. You deserve some Absolutely. kind of recognition. Yeah. So yeah, uh, what did that put her in? Three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, she was she was voted eighth, eighth on our uh, list, and we probably should have done top ten, but I can't be bothered to go that far. Uh, whereas, uh, yeah. Alex Pereira beating it, beating her just with eleven points, which. I'm, I'm not sure I really understand this category, to be honest. I mean, Alex no. Pereira had already won a belt. How the hell can he be breakthrough fighter of the year? I think it's uh, from what he had come through previously and also the fact that he did win another title adds mm -hmm. to that. I think that's that's possibly the, you know justification for him being on this list but then there are people who had issues with like oh what's the definition of a breakthrough fighter i mean yeah. you know it's like uh, it, we can only work with what we have in the category so at this That's point it, and the, it, it's it's fine i have no issues with alex Pereira being on here because of the fact that he did win a title this year mm -hmm. but at the same time is he my is he my breakthrough absolutely not no <laughs> yeah yeah i guess he broke through into a new division if you want to look at it that way absolutely and that's the thing that you could justify it like that that's that's the whole point right yeah uh and then just just above him we had his uh his old training mate as it happens and the guy he knocked out once uh just a couple of months earlier sean strickland on 13 points again I, i'm not really sure i count strickland as a breakthrough fighter i, I know he, he entered the year on two losses and then obviously got three wins across the entire uh, year and took the belt but again, I I don't really know if it counts as a breakthrough fighter for me. Um, we're going to get to my fighter later on, but yeah. Well, yeah, I think you can just based off of the main event that he had, not like the previous fights, but the actual Izzy upset. He breaking through into the consciousness after where he got knocked out. That's probably yeah. you can argue his breakthrough moment, but everything yeah. after that, the build up to the actual fight. The two previous fights where he took on, uh, uh, um, I uh, I forget his Imabov. name, Imabov. 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 Thank you. Yes. And then the the short notice nature of the fight because he refused to accept that he lost to um, <laughs> the, uh, to a previous fighter. I forget. Oh my god, I am just forgetting names right now. Um, That's my but, job. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. I just said you should. I'm supposed to be the guy that knows everything, considering I was the king are. of trivia. Remember? No, oh, God, <laughs> damn it. This is terrible. Uh, but no, like he shows up, wins this fight against Imavov, and then fights Abus, and then beats him. And I mean, they, 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 you, there's no reason for him to be a breakthrough fighter until he beats Izzy, and that's the Izzy. whole point, right? He, that's the moment he shows up and actually becomes the champion. 
that's his breakthrough yeah, moment. I, I, guess, I guess he breaks through into more people's consciousness. I guess it's easy for me to uh, kind of ignore him somewhat because I was a Sean Strickland fan long yeah. before he won the belt. Yep. So, uh, so yeah. Whereas Alexa Grasso what? didn't have that. This uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> she her moment yeah, was earlier in the year one, when yeah. she won the actual <laughs> belt, and then uh, arguably I thought she defended it, but neither here nor there. Uh, defending her spot as you know a champion. Yeah, she broke yeah. through earlier this year and then stayed in the spotlight because she's still champion. You can't say mm-hmm. she didn't break through because, yeah, she had a following. Granted, some of it is for, you know, <laughs> other yeah. purposes, but still. Uh, <laughs> Let's not go into the feet, feet no, pictures. Th- uh, yeah, because I wasn't going to bring it up now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, like, she's definitely, she's definitely someone who broke into the consciousness of the casual fan and you know, yeah. especially with the way she finished uh, the former champion. You know, you can't argue against that. No, that's fair enough. Uh, and then, uh, and then, surprising people again. I'm going to say more or less the same for Tom Aspinall, who was in fourth place with 18 points. Um, obviously, I'm a Brit, so I'm good. I was aware of Tom Aspinall. I've been a fan of his for a while. Um, but I guess it's the, the comeback from his the knee injury that he suffered against Blades. So I can see again why he got the points. Uh, I'm just glad he didn't, as a, a horrible as it may sound, I'm glad he didn't make the top three um, <laughs> for this character, for this category. Well, so no, because he. The other, I think all the three people above him deserve it more than he does. Yeah, well, because he gets the uh, the win at home against uh, Spivak, right? Granted, it wasn't like we yeah. weren't expecting him to lose. You know, no, it was supposed yeah. to be a kind of a walkover fight for him. Granted, it, Spivak is one of the better heavyweights, speaking of um, the division. And he gets this offer on short notice. All of us, I was pretty nervous for him going into that fight. And that's, so was I. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, you didn't expect him to win. And if you did, you would hope it'd be early because you weren't sure how, how he's going to hold up going into the rest of that fight. Thankfully, it didn't I need to go there. I didn't expect him to win. It's it's heavyweight, and I always view heavyweight fights as somewhat of a 50-50 coin flip. Um, That's fair. It could, it could go either way, always. I didn't expect him to win in 69 seconds. No, <laughs> yeah, that. especially the way he uh, was getting clipped early on, you know, and then yeah, nearly... One, yeah, almost, almost lost his mouth guard the first time, yeah. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, going into that fight, you had that whole, okay, well... He said he had his back injured, but didn't disclose that until afterwards. You know, so, no, yeah. Thankfully, it, it, it he, said it, he said afterwards he regretted mentioning that it just kind of popped out of his mouth. He wasn't even going to talk about it. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you can't blame the guy. He won, so thankfully, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. uh, the the great moment for that was the fact that he took it on the same notice as Mike Michael Bisping. You know, two and a half weeks notice or whatever it was. Yeah, um, eleven days. Comes, yeah, comes in and wins the title. Wins the title exactly the same as Bisming did. So yeah, I, I love the parity of that one. Oh yeah, uh, but yeah. But the top three: uh, Shavkat Rachmanov, twenty-two points. Can't mm-hmm. argue with this one. Uh, obviously, a lot of us had been aware of Shavkat for quite a while, uh, but I can see why people are not as. Uh, I mean, I always call myself the can of casuals, but even I was aware of Shavkat. Uh, <laughs> Going into but, this, yeah, I, I, I do always call myself a dedicated casual as well. Um, at least trying, you know. And that's the thing; it's yeah. like Shavkat was that guy that showed up, and he'd just be like, "All right, I'm going to finish this guy. We're not sure yeah. how he's going to finish him, but he's going to finish him." And <laughs> especially with his performances uh, as of late, his uh, war with Jeff Neal, and then his, you know, mm-hmm. relatively safe, you know, uh, but measured um, and calculated fight with uh, Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy. You know, with, a, with a broken, with a either broken or injured foot, wasn't it as well? So absolutely, and that's the thing. It's like you can't you can't blame him for the fight, especially no. with who he's against. Granted, more uh, often when you when you look at it, I, I was shocked by this one. I didn't realize Wonder Boy had never been finished by submission. Uh, no, he's usually just getting knocked out. He's had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I, it. <laughs> exactly, and he doesn't. He did. I mean, he doesn't lose that many fights. Wonder Boy. Uh, no. He's another one of those crafty veterans. He really is good. Uh, oh yeah, he's he's definitely he's definitely uh, a veteran at this point. A uh, very mm-hmm. difficult and tricky veteran. Yeah, w- one of the best strikers in the UFC. Yep, uh, without without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, second place, we have Benoit Sandini, who was my number one pick for this category. Um, 
you know, it was hardly anyone knew who he was. Uh, he had that first. His first fight in the UFC was uh, short notice, and he fought at welterweight and lost. So I think that probably uh, some he, people might have just yeah, he looked, put him off their list that he way. He looked bad in that fight because he was just mm-hmm. A, outsized, and B, just not prepared. Yeah. Short like, notice as well, wasn't yeah. it? No, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. You can't blame him. And then he wraps, he runs off, what was it, five wins now? I think so, yeah. Because he came back and beat uh, Bon Fim, didn't he? We yep. beat one of the young, one of the Bonfim brothers because uh, I think I think I picked against BSD in that one uh, again. Again, Bonfim. I think everyone expected Bonfim to win that one, and then uh, I forget exactly. Was it a knee strike that one again? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was a knee strike. So yeah, uh, twenty five points. Not a deserved second place. I, I think he deserves first, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? It's close. I would say. I think yeah, you, yeah. You could argue yeah. this one is at least close. And, I mean, for the main guy, realistically, Drake is coming through the way for the number one pick mm-hmm. so far. Again, this is, yeah. we got a couple of days. So, um, Drake is beating Robert Whitaker, I think, was the thing that made us realize, okay, this guy's for real. Beating yeah. Darren Till, be, beating, beating Derek Brunson, I mean, honestly, just kind of looking sloppy as hell, hell you know? I think that's the thing is that none of, none of us actually took him serious as a contender until he actually beat mm-hmm. the former champion. Yeah. And he, yeah. he did it with relative ease compared to his other fights. <laughs> yeah. Again, I can see why uh, Drick has got the, uh, got the nod on this one. Uh, just, just my favoritism for uh, Benoit Sunday, I guess. That's fair. You know, that's fair. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite French fighter. <laughs> Breakthrough fighter of the year so far is Drake is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then Definitely fe- much better than Gano. I've been hating all all year long. So, eh, you know what? Eh, so we not, we can't all have this uh, favorites. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think we've only got two. We got, we got two, two left. Two, two categories left. Yeah. So female fighter of the year next. Uh, I and w- should we just do the top three on this one? Uh, we could do the That's top. Like, uh, we- let's go with uh, loop. We could go from Loopy on up. Oh, there, there you go. Good man. I'm glad you mentioned Lupi Godinez because she was my <laughs> female fighter of the year. Uh, yeah. First female ever to get four wins in a single year of the UFC. Uh, so I think she deserved to be ranked much higher than she was with 11 points on this one. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I think compared to other fighters, she's just one of those girls who's just, she's not big for her weight class either. She's just very competitive she's actually going in taking fights relatively you know short notice sometimes but she's mm-hmm. getting wins and that's the thing that's hard yeah. to do for women's mma is that you to be consistent and have actual win streaks is extremely hard to do mm-hmm. and she's doing it on short notice against very yeah. good competition well she had, a, she had a weird year didn't she she had two fights very early on in the year yep. and then two fights very late in the year so oh yeah exactly i guess one of them must have been fairly short notice Oh, no, it's hard to get couple. fights sometimes if you're in women's MMA. You know, not everybody's available. Yeah. From what I remember, she's got some pretty decent hands on her as well. Yeah. She's a good grappler, so she sticks to grappling. But when she's, you know, when she can't get the takedown, she's at least got boxing behind her. Mm-hmm. And I'll let you take the next one because I can't remember a damn thing about Larissa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're going to talk about people who are female fighter of the year, I mean... Larissa Pacheco is one for sure that you should at least have on your list. She doesn't need to be your number one, but actually being somebody who beat a two-time Olympian in, um, you know, the PFL, considering that she had already lost to her twice. Granted, that's all past, uh, you know, victories, but this year she they dropped the, the weight class to, instead of 155, they brought it down to 145. So... Yeah. She ended up doing the same thing again, just beating all the contenders. She didn't fight uh, Kayla Harrison, however. She Kayla Harrison only fought once, and it was against a, a former bantamweight in the UFC. So this this situation was Larissa Pacheco won two tournaments in a row, and now okay. she's yeah. she's that, finally that explains why I don't yeah. know who she is because she fights in the PFL. And yeah, I exactly. Just can't yeah, to watch PFL. Yeah, and this is the thing is that her next fight possibly could be against Cyborg. Yeah. And that's the thing there that they were arguing about, and everyone's kind of saying, "Well, why don't I just throw her cyborg against Kayla Harrison?" No, Pacheco's actually fought 
Pacheco is actually fighting at 145, which is a weight class that Cyborg fights at. And I'll arguably say, I think she knocks her the fuck out, but that's just me. <laughs> I can't comment on her because I've never seen her fight. If, if the PFL got their uh, act together and ran better cards, uh, every, yeah, time I tried to watch a, every time I tried to watch a PFL card, it seems like half an hour between fights. It's like, yeah, pacing's you know, terrible. I, I, and for, and for yeah. me, these cards are on at two o'clock in the morning. I, I don't want to be sitting around waiting half an hour to, to watch the next fight between a couple of fighters I've probably never heard of anyway. No, so. yeah, that's the other thing too, is that like they don't have the notoriety. If they were just one thing like that was on and could arguably put on better fights, Okay, the pacing fixes itself. You just, you know, put in the ads between fights and you don't extend it so that way you're kind of adding it with filler. You just need the fights to be on on a regular basis. So there's a lot of things they could address, but in this case, Larissa Pacheco is working out for them. That's fair enough. I will bow to your experience there. <laughs> I, I'm just, just checked up on the next one. I am baffled why Wei Li Zhang is, is up there in fourth place, to be blunt. He's had one fight this year. I think it's because well, last, last I, year, should I say? Well, I, Lemos, I admit the lib, but. but I think that's the thing. I think it's because where she was prior to that. I think it's again the story, um, because she was defending the belt, kept the mm-hmm. belt, and it's the only women's one fifteen fight that you can think of that like, all right, well that's you know she's one of the few that's standing out in that weight class currently because flyweight has been the one that's been getting a lot of the headlines as of late. Yeah, like I say, I, I just don't really think you deserve that highly ranking for one fight. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, a lot of people yeah, thought a, a Lemos. Special opinion, tough look. But, yeah. No, no, I don't think you're wrong on that, but it's because like a lot of uh, people thought Lemos was going to bring a lot harder of a fight than she actually did. So I think that's half of it. Yeah. Whereas the next one, I don't yeah. think that's the case. <laughs> yeah. well, she, she's the MK favorite, isn't it? It's. Uh... Yeah, she was a hammer. She was a hammer of the month. So you can't you can't take that away from her. <laughs> also true. Yeah. Aaron Blanchfield, I think, being the third place uh, recipient here for us at what is it, twenty three points. Yeah. Not bad. I mean, granted, Dave will. Be- <laughs> our, uh, our editor in chief would probably dis- yeah. disagree with us, yeah, but Talia, Talia Santos, wasn't it? I'm just, I'm just yeah. Up now. But I mean, she's it, she's well, handled. It wasn't it. the most exciting fight, but she she's a young fighter. She does, you know, she needs to do that to get the win. Exactly, that's the way she gets the win. She she also it was against a a very difficult fight in you know Talia Santos and also a person who could have arguably been the champion currently, right? Mm-hmm. I I don't one performance that's questionable against a very tough opponent. Then on top of it, she's already been steamrolling everybody. I mean, hell, she finished. Um, uh, Amanda, uh, uh, Jessica Andrade, not Amanda, mm-hmm. I, I was gonna say Jessica Andrade. Yeah, yeah. She finished Jessica Andrade, in which is not something a lot of people can do. Nope, absolutely. You know, not. that's it's a hard, it's a hard division right now. I, I think it's very likely she'll have, she'll will win a belt at some point in the uh, in the future. Absolutely. Just not now. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe not now. We'll no. see. Maybe. We'll see. She's got to get not. through manual feel first. Mm-hmm. Manon Pearl, yeah, yeah. Uh, that should that should be a good fight, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, certainly be a tough fight. Oh, yeah. Well, what would you think about the second place entry with 25 Amanda points? Nunes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, very, it's hard to argue with uh, Amanda Nunes getting highly ranked. Uh, you know, that, you know, as we were talking about, she had the retirement. I, I, I can't fault her getting second place, really. Uh, I would have probably edged her out to Blanchfield, but I don't have a problem with a legend getting that highly ranked. Uh, it's, it's, this, this is one of the clearest categories I think we've voted for on the uh, across the Discord. Uh, I mean, I don't if you want to say anything more about Nunes. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Alexa Grasso, 69 points, two and a half times what anyone else scored. This is, like I said, the biggest romp home to victory, I, I think, across the entire uh, thing. I think you could give the sympathy for the retirement. I think that's mm-hmm. probably what it is, defending the belt and then retiring with the belts. I think that's the only thing you could do. And then realistically, with, um, with Grasso, Grasso was just unheralded. 
and then already had wins going into that that year. So I think going into the title fight again with, you know, beating Shevchenko the way she did, and I, we've already discussed it to death, but, you know, defending, quote-unquote defending, you know, because he went to a draw, which, I again, I'll, I'll argue that I think she won, but it, it's hard to do that, especially against someone that's this season as her. I mean, hell, it was hard for Amanda to hold on to her spot, and then she had to hold on to her spot recently. Like, she had to, she lost and then regained it, and she retired. Mm-hmm. Grasso's still young in her career. She's a breakthrough. I want to say she's a absolute like mm-hmm. you know yeah, like, I know where you're going yeah. <laughs> yeah but i at the same time it's like it she's she's up there doing her thing man you can't be anything more than impressed with what she's done considering how she started her career inside the ufc and now she's actually like i said she she was a straw weight at first had weight issues after a couple of wins and losses and then finally found herself at 125 after taking some time off. Like sometimes they just you you need young fighters need time to actually adjust into their proper weight class and into their actual like fighting style. It's not easy for everybody to transition into a, a top tier level fighter. And now she's done that. Yep. Good for her. <clears throat> yeah. Definitely, definitely deserving of a female fighter of the year. Absolutely. Yeah. No arguments there. And so I guess this is the the final category, the one that everyone really wants to uh, hear. <laughs> um, just to shut us up, um, we might we might as well do the top five on this one, I guess, because we tied in fifth place. We have uh, uh, Naoa Inoue and Patchy Mix both on twelve points. And if we don't mention Inoue, uh, J.K. is going to uh, roast us to uh, death because he said that. This was the guy who deserved to be the fighter of the year, and everyone who didn't vote for him is a mouth breather. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, J.K. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, you also had, yeah, I mean, and Patchy, Patchy Mix on the same point, but I've already said I haven't seen Patchy Mix's fight, so I can't comment on it. And I, I think I've only seen one boxing fight this year, and that was Francis versus Fury. Um, so yeah, I can't, I can't say anything about how good his performance was. Well, I, don't know I mean, you want to, to talk about anything about that? No, well, to be, if you want to be fair to Inoue in this case, like and Patchy Mix, both of them essentially gained multiple titles. Um, and the reason why I'll say, uh, not necessary, not in in a way necessarily, but uh, Patchy Mix, he won the tournament title. Technically, mm-hmm. it's a, I think if if you want to give it a, a, a name, it's a title because there was about sixteen band and whites in it, and he won that. And then yeah. he won the actual title. And that is extremely hard to do. Granted, you're going off of two fights necessarily for the year, but still, that's still difficult. Granted, uh, it, in a way, has been just destroying <laughs> fucking competition in his boxing. So, yeah. like, you listen to MK, you listen to some of the other fight podcasts, they'll bring up Inouye because Inouye is this guy that's just a fun fighter to watch. He is this guy that's yeah. literally going in and murdering people because he can. He is very innocent looking, but God damn it, he is also scary. <laughs> but again, I, I don't watch boxing all the time. And matter of fact, it's rare that I do. I'll, I'm, I'm with you in that sense too. Uh, yeah. But in the same, like you have to do give respect where respect is due, and in a way, is definitely someone of very, very deserving of respect in this case. Yeah, I dare say if we would add uh, K Stacks on, he would have been uh, ranting about this one as well. But I don't think we would have ended the show for another two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> very possibly a history lesson on uh, in a way's boxing. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> it's a long one too. So, hey. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the, the top four we have. Uh, our new interim heavyweight champion, Tom Aspinall, 14 points. Um, again, I don't think he necessarily deserves fighter of the year. Uh, he deserves to be up there because he's obviously he's won a belt and he did a fantastic, and on short notice against an absolute killer. Uh, so no problems with him being ranked where he is. Yeah, I agreed. I mean, look, he beat Pavlovich and won a title. Yeah. I, although he also, yeah. uh, he beat two, uh, what was it? Sergey Pavlovich, right? Yeah, and beat Pavlovich then, in uh, 69 seconds, and it was, I'm trying to think of who we fought. Sergey Spivak, uh, Spivak in a minute, or in, a, in the first round as well. 
short, relatively short fights. And you had mentioned something about that when we were recapping the uh, both fights. I think is that he had he's relatively like the shortest fight time in his yeah, um, competition. I think I think now his average fight time is something like one minute nineteen seconds or something stupid. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, yeah. being good. Ty, you know, Tybura was, like, was Ty, Marcin Tybura was the other fight he won this year. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you are correct. Not, yes. uh, not uh, Spivak. I think. Yeah. I'll just uh, thank you for dead wrong, dog, <laughs> dead wrong <laughs> me in the moment. Yes. Yeah. There you go. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but that's the thing. Not so much me as Google, but yeah. No, nah, but hey, you know, I, I think that's the thing with the uh, with Aspinall. You, you can't really. He he's he's deserving of mention, but to be in the top, I don't think he's deserving to be in the top. But hey, do you want to bring in the next one? I, I do love this year because there are eight male divisions, and the UK holds twenty five percent of the divisions has their champions. I know you can say that John Jones has the actual belt, but we all know John Jones is going to retire uh, after he fights. I do uh, think he should have it. Uh, Whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just, That's just, just me, though. Slightly off topic there. You see that uh, Stipe has apparently said that he'll fight Aspinall if he wins against uh, Jones. I hate this. <laughs> I, they should just be fighting him. But... Yeah, I do agree. <sighs> All right, let's, let's just jump on to it because we've been going with <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Third place, Leon Edwards, 22 points. Uh, two great performances. Beat, obviously, Usman in the rematch or the third third fight. Um, in wherever the hell it was, therefore I forget. I forget that. I forget where they, that fight took place. And then he beat Colby in one of the most boring title fights of the year. Um, as long as Colby suffers from it, I don't care how it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think Edwards deserves his, deserves his spot, to be honest. But it's, he definitely wasn't the most exciting fighter of the year. Um, well, no, you but remember you he, he, he beat two legends of the welterweight division. You know, you can yeah. say what you like about Colby, but he does have that pedigree behind him. He's um, good. He should fight more often. It would be actually help his resume. But no, he chooses not to because he's a pussy. But that's neither yeah. here nor there. <laughs> so, and second place we have on thirty-two points, Islam Makachev. Uh, which I'm pleased to see he only got second place on this one. Um, not being harsh, uh, but as we discussed, the first fight with Volt was great. Second fight was a short notice one, but they're both fights against a guy who was from a weight division lower than him. Uh, one of them on very short notice. Like I said, I would never have voted him as fighter of the year. Um, my actual <sighs> choice for fighter... My, I, th I think Gaethje had a better year than Makachev, to be honest. Yeah, I, from Parier fight. Well, I think they, they, he, well, he beat an up and comer in Fiziev because everyone, like I said, everyone was picking Fiziev to beat Gaethje and he, he destroyed it. Well, he didn't destroy him, but he beat him. And then I think a lot of people didn't expect him to beat Poirier because he'd lost to him last time. And then not only did he finish, with him, finish him, he finished him with the what we've decided is a knockout of the year. So for me, Gaethje had a better year than Makachev in that respect. But I've no problems, I guess, with him getting second place. I don't know. About <laughs> you. Well, here's the thing. For me, it's the number one. It's the it's the pound for pound fighter at the time mm -hmm. when he first faces him, right? Yeah. And that's the thing. Where if we're talking about this year, him beating him the first time, and as close as as controversial as the you know the decision was, he still beat him. Yet. Yeah. People, for some reason, decided, well, he was the smaller fighter. He deserves, he went up a weight class. He was re arguably the guy who I thought won, even though technically the decision went his way. And again, I'm not going to hear uh, to argue what the decision was, like how you could have scored the decision. It's the fact that he won the decision. And then people still put the guy he l beat up above yeah, him as above pound him pound. in the pound for pound. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that's Which insane. Is, <laughs> yeah, it is, of course it is. I mean, that, that's why I was I was laughing. I think at someone on the Discord, as you know, I said that he beat the supposed pound for pound. But when Volk tried to go up a, a weight class, he lost and lost twice. So clearly, he's not pound for pound because he couldn't do it at the higher level. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think if you're going to argue the first fight, okay, the second fight, <sighs> it's definitive. 
but there's a i think you could do this if if you're trying to discredit is islam's um position as fighter of the year it's primarily due to a the first fight being as close as competitive against a smaller opponent granted it was a pound mm-hmm. for pound well, number one at the time uh, yeah. a lot of things going against islam in that fight the weight cut didn't go exactly to plan plus he's fighting in a different time zone different area never been there before there's a lot of things that are going against him. It's not an excuse, but he still showed up and still won. Yeah. Going into the second fight, there are th- so many things that are going against Volk. A, not prepared. B, yeah. short notice. B, yeah. he literally gets knocked out and then has a, a full-on thing where we're, we're seeing into the inside of this man's, you know, I'm not going to say soul. Mental state. Yeah, his yeah. Mental, mental state, right? And he's telling us if i'm not in fight camp i'm not okay and that to me doesn't feel okay you know like no. if you're gonna go ahead and say okay well islam deserves it you also have to say it wasn't in the best circumstances for either man in both fights which is kind yeah. of a shame because now we won't ever get a third fight and i don't think it's necessary that we have a third fight but absolutely not because of what we saw in the first fight that that should have gotten something that we saw in 300 yeah and now we won't get that right yeah exactly and that's the thing it's like we rushed this fight because we wanted to make a pay-per-view and that's that's the result that we got well we the annoying thing was they had a standing fire didn't they and then the saudi <laughs> crowd we presume <laughs> just they... decided they didn't want to see it so we ended up getting vault dragged in on short notice instead that's the worst thing you could have done because a... i'm sure made the saudi crowd very happy seeing uh, islam beat volk again with a, such a spectacular well semi-spectacular knockout Exactly. And that's the thing. We're like looking at this fight like you could have we could have had this fight regardless. And this could have honestly been this the result where anyways, you know, mm-hmm. could because both men are good. And yeah. that's the sad part is that like, what was the point of having Gamrot if you're going to have him in, yeah, if you know, replace him? Yeah, yeah. This, it was stupid. It was ne- it was not necessary because you already had the backup. You already had somebody that was on standby who was actually ready, who could have given him a hard, uh, a decent fight. But no, no, we had to sacrifice this beautiful version of a fight that we could have possibly seen later. Well, in the- I, I did, I did make the joke at the time that uh, Volk's uh, Volk's wife had just given birth to uh, I can't remember if it was a son or a daughter, whatever it was. So I said that Volk just wanted to get out of the house so he could escape the uh, crying <laughs> baby. Uh, you might not be wrong on that one, but still. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, oh, Jesus. So anyway, our the Donks, the Discord's fighter of the year, Sean Strickland, forty-four points. Um, I have zero problem with this. I love <laughs> no, this you result. don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think it's genuinely deserved. To be fair, he had he had two short. He, he lost, I think, two fights last year, didn't he? Yeah, so that was the thing. Yeah, and he came back on short notice, beat Abbas and uh, Imovov, and then took took Izzy on short notice, destroyed him in a way no one had foreseen could happen. So yeah, Sean Strickland deserves it. Deserves the belt. Deserves this award. No argument on my side. Uh, Feel free to abuse me or Sean Strickland if you want. I I I mean, other than being a homer, I mean, no, I think you're (laughs) you're fine on this one. The only other one you could have argued uh, in this case, honestly, would have been just if we're just talking about fighter of the year. (sighs) I've already given my other one, which was Justin Gaethje. (laughs) No, and I think that's the thing, like. Maybe Pantoja, like just as a heartfelt kind of, I don't know. Like even then, you can't because it's technically, you know, two title fights: one of him attaining and the other one of him defending. Granted, both of the performances have questionable moments of his cardio, um, fight IQ possibly, but you know, that you I don't think you can argue against Sean because of a who he beat prior to that, and then who he beat at the end of the year. Or at yeah. the end of when he was fighting. I mean, if he had somehow managed just to managed to squeeze in, like, um, if they decided, okay, Drake is in Sean Strickland fight in December. Mm-hmm. I think they were trying to get Sean to defend it, weren't they? And he he just turned around and said, no, I'm not doing it, which is very rare for Sean Strickland. Well, he is a champion. He should be able to say no. Yep. 
I agree. Yep. I mean, that's the thing. I think it, it, even then, like, I don't think you can argue with another fighter because everyone only has two, maybe one fight that you can say, okay, all right, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty much my fighter of the year right there. Whereas Sean didn't have that and kind of just went in was like, all right, he's just, he's just trying to get back into contention. Then availability was his saving grace. Mm-hmm. Then being an underdog, I, I, I mean, I'm just looking at the list now, and I, I think you just mentioned it. Sean's the only one on this list who's had three fights this year or last year, should I say? Exactly, and that's so. the thing. Yeah, it, 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 you're looking at the rest of this this column, and it, I don't know why Jamal Hill is even on here, but that's that's another story. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm more... let's not forget uh, Sean Str- uh, Sean Strickland took on uh, Abbas. And Sean was meant to be the sacrificial victim for Abbas. I think I'm pretty sure the USC wanted Abbas to destroy Sean Strickland and would have been really, really happy with how that first round was going. Obviously not quite so bloody happy about the second round when uh, Sean came out and went, oh, I you've think, gassed yourself. You're yeah, dead. <laughs> I agreed. I, I think that was, I, I don't know if they wanted him to be destroyed. I think they wanted him to see, okay, he's technically a Dagestani, you know, He's training out of Germany, but he 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 should be this guy because he I don't know if you know this he fought for the first PFL uh, uh, title um, middleweight title yeah. mm-hmm. and he was knocked out early in that round as well. Ah, and he was knocked out very early in PFL. I didn't know he'd fought and been knocked out that. Yeah, way. when they ran a middleweight tournament, he had lost to a UFC vet, and the name is escaping me right now. Um, a training partner with uh, Jared Gordon, I believe, maybe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I, 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 again, it's it's another. It's, uh, I have to double check that, so you might I might be dead wrong on that one. But um, he uh, he knocks out Abus, and Abus just falls like a stack of bricks, just going backwards, just like gets caught with the overhand right, and that's the end of it. Like boom, and that was because he was murdering all the opponents going into that fight, and yeah then we just don't hear from him after that. Not is, he, even... is he then of the same kind of mold as uh, Hamza Chimeyev, a really, really dangerous first-round fighter? But once you get past the first round, it becomes questionable. No, because Abis doesn't grapple. Abis is a guy who's a kickboxer, same as Imavov. The difference yeah. was is that Imavov is capable of going the distance and uh, sticking to a game plan. It, he might get a yeah. little overzealous at points, but he's very consistent with his... Like, he's like a... He's like uh, if Musasi was a Dagestani, <laughs> except except um, except he kind of gets a little bit more into the back and forth of like, oh, you hit me with a leg kick, I'm gonna hit you with a leg kick harder, kind of yeah. thing. Whereas Abus is like, okay, shit, he's still here. <laughs> I threw everything in the kitchen sink at him. I don't know what to do now. I, I thought he was more of a grappler with the way because he did go for he did get a couple of takedowns against Sean, didn't he, in the first round? Yeah, he's not a grappler by trade. He is only a grappler in uh, desperation. Yeah, and it's usually because like if you come out of Dagestan, you're either a, a striker or be a grappler. And if you're mm-hmm. a grappler, you have some striking. But if you're primarily your bread and butter is going to be grappling ninety percent of your game plan. If you're a striker, that ten percent of grappling is out of desperation. <laughs> Yeah, like the bullet. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see how he does the, this year. Exactly, yeah. But no, hey, um, I think Sean Strickland is very deserving of fight of the year. I don't, I don't see how you can argue argue anybody else. And even then, it's because of what he was going through. Again, I think this is what we discussed earlier. That story, the story of la- yeah. last year, and then the story of this year, culminating to the crescendo. Of his title win. And then him kind of being this overnight sensation. Mm-hmm. You can't argue it, honestly. No. Uh, plus, he's, he's always fun at press conferences. Yeah. I mean, when he's not talking about abuse and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not a here today. Fight of the year, ladies no, and gentlemen. Sean no, let's, Strickland. Let, let's, <laughs> let's not go into uh, that on this uh, show. We'll just, we'll just stick with the awards. Uh, so, yeah. Congratulations, Sean Strickland. Uh-uh. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Leave Dave, leave Dave to edit in a Tarzan uh, yell here.
<laughs> he used to have long hair. I don't, you, I don't know if you'll remember that from the old Johnny Weissmuller uh, films. Oh, no, yeah, he, definitely. No, the, the iconic Tarzan, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he he used, there. Have you seen Sean Strickland with the old Tarzan hair? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a trip, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very very good looking uh, guy uh, when he, with all the long hair. I, I was laughing the other day because uh, on BYM with uh, Laura Sanko saying that Sean Strickland and Michael Bisbing, uh, you know, went back when Bisbing shaved all his hair off when he was a bit younger and before his face got ripped into tiny shreds, that those two look very much alike. And thinking about it, they do look quite alike. Oh, yeah, they're or both did, uh, back in the day. Boy, oh, they're both shit talkers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, shit talkers, bonehead kind of thing. Uh, ah, yeah, they're, they're headstrong kind of guys. They're both uh, they're birds yeah. of a feather, them. And they they yeah. they honestly, I think I could see a younger Bisbing and him honestly being buddies. And it, mm-hmm. I mean, they both had similar fight styles. Pressure, not heavy handed, yep. but they're definitely going to be in your face throughout the fight. And you got to knock them out in order to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good assessment. We we will see how Sean's. Uh, Cardio works out when we uh, get our first title fight of 2024 against Rickus. Oh my god, I am actually excited about that fight. I just don't want to see the yeah, press conference. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be messy, I must admit. Oh yeah, agreed. Yeah. Okay, I guess that's about time that we uh, wrap this up because I think we're just uh, talking a lot of bollocks at the moment mainly and uh, just filling <laughs> time. Uh, so uh, we'll be back uh, hopefully next week uh, for the Walker versus Ankaleev uh, fight. I don't know what number it is. I haven't got the notes in front it's of me. Two. Uh, it's two. It's their rematch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the rematch. Well, hopefully it won't end in an illegal knee strike this time. Oh, God, I hope we just didn't jinx it. Yeah. Or a dislocated shoulder for uh, Johnny Walker. Yeah, that's true. Himself. Okay, well, you want to put money on it real quick? <laughs> <laughs> well, on who will win? No, on what what happens? Like it's either going to be injury or uh, some kind of a foul disqualification. <laughs> I, I really don't know how it's going to go. I I I, I think it. We, hopefully, we shouldn't get any nasty fouls on that. I'm going to say uh, another uh, non no contest due to yeah. some kind of a forced <laughs> unforced injury error. I'm going to yeah. say that. I'm going to say, and it's going to be against Uncle Life because he's a knucklehead right now. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Put that one in the books. Austin's choice of that one. Yeah, I'll There's go no to my grave with this one. Description. Yeah. If you get that, get PV to put that in the picks for you as a special bonus. If you get it right, you can start off with a five point. Lead. Why not, right? <laughs> <laughs> the perfect pick. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we'll be back. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, subscribe. My mouth's not working at the moment. It's been a long. We've been at this for like two hours, and I said this show was going to be about an hour longish. I know. Uh, so I think we've had a, I think we've had a pretty good one. Uh, so uh, nice chatting with you, Austin. Uh, hey, you as well, sir. See everybody next week. Goodbye, everyone. Say goodbye, Austin. <laughs> Later. <laughs> say, go- say goodbye, Dave. I see you've just unmuted yourself. Bye, everyone. Fuck you, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got it. Yes, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't order from Latvia. You did. So why, the, why the fuck has it come from Latvia? I don't know. <laughs>